rumor that there was going to be a secret performance, a secret special guest. And they had their operatives and shills going out here to social media, hinting that it was going to be Beyonce. That was something that the DNC did. That was a finesse. TMZ even straight up and down said she was performing. You know, TMZ has clicked in with the with the DNC. You know, they're a very liberal publication. So, and in TNC, they they just apologized. They just they put up an apology tweet, but it was all a finesse from the beginning. Um, pretending that Beyonce was going to be there so that people would tune in. They put that rumor out a few days ago. Actually, that was the DNC doing that. This is how desperate they are. They're the ones who started the rumor. Because when the rumor started, they didn't. They would have came out and said, well, no, 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 that's not true. She's not performing. Nobody said that. They just kept the rumor going in order to finesse views. So th this is these are signs of desperation. These are some desperation signs that they're doing. They ain't talking about no policies or nothing. They ain't talking about no policies. They're just, it's a lot of sizzle and no steak. They're putting a lot of performances out there. And you can only throw them smoke screens out for so long. That's just not going to work. Eventually, people are going to say, hey, man, where are the policies? What, what is she going to do politically? What is she going to do politically? And another thing they did, they brought out the Central Park Five. Did y'all see that? And I, I didn't watch. I watched hardly none of it. I really didn't watch it. I'm looking at with the volume down, I got the TV on now. There's just clips of, um, of Kamala in a little black chopper suit. But, <laughs> you know, her little ill-fitting suits. She, them suits be looking, you know, they try to make her look tough with the pants suits. And she looked like a, a goddamn disco queen with them little polyester suits. But they brought out the Central Park Five. And this is something I got to put y'all on game about. So they brought the Central Park Five out and their whole thing was throwing shots at Trump for putting out that ad in the 1990s. Um, and they, the ad didn't specifically name them, I don't think, but it was an ad taking shots at them on damn near some subliminals about um, the death penalty and all of this stuff. And, you know, a lot of people have kind of ragged Trump about that, putting out that ad, taking out a four page ad. Was it the New York Post? One of those big publications in New York taking a shot at the Central Park Five and later found out that they were basically innocent. So they got on the um, DNC convention today. They were up there with Sharpton taking shots at Trump. How many of y'all saw that? If you saw that, raise your hand. If you saw that, raise your hand. What's up, Sir Major? I see you, player. Here's the thing about that. And I put up this tweet. Here's the thing. See, this is what I don't like about what the Democrats try to do. The only time they acknowledge any form of racism is if they can just dump it on the right wingers. Yeah, there's some racism from the right wingers, but there's racism from the left, too. You're just as culpable. And I don't play that game where you're going to stand up here and just throw all the racism on them. Because if we're going to be honest, they can't sit up there and put all the blame on Trump for the whole Central Park Five thing. Because what they try to do is make it seem like Trump was actually responsible for them getting locked up. That's not necessarily the case. What they're not telling you, it was the Democrats that got them dudes hemmed up like that. Family, that DA... Linda Fairstein, she was a Democrat. I put the tweet up. Now the the the, the Democrats kind of got salty about it. And I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, no. Y'all sitting up here talking about Trump and the Central Park Five. It was the Democrats back then throwing them brothers under the bus. Linda Feinstein or Linda Fairstein, not only is she a Democrat, she's a major Democrat donor. I put up her donor list where she was donating to Hillary Clinton donating to Obama. All of them are speaking at the DNC, remember? These are people from the DNC who got money from the woman who had them locked up and locked down. 
they're not going to wiggle out of this and then point the finger at somebody else. They are complicit in it. And let me tell you something about the Democrats, man, because you know, they like to play this little game of, of hot potato with racism. Let me tell you something. In the 90s, it was starting in the late 80s, early 90s, the Democrats started this whole demonizing of black men so that they can be tough on crime. Um, what they did, they saw in 1988, there was a guy named Dukakis, I think Michael Dukakis, who was running against Bush. And the Bush administration, they put out this ad about a guy named Willie Horton. It's a very infamous political ad and strategy. It's called the Willie Horton strategy now. It's like studied in political science. But there was this black man who was released early from jail. And then he killed some white people. And boy, they the, the right-wingers milked that and put it on Dukakis, put it on his policies. I, I don't know, if, I think it was something about Dukakis's policies help let the man get out early, and then he killed some white people. So Bush and those guys ran with that Willie Horton thing, and they had the black man looking real niggerish in the ads, you know, eyes bucking, looking just crazy as cat shit. So they ran those ads, and that killed the caucus's career. I mean, it blew him out the water. It just buried his career. This was in 1988. So the Democrats said, okay, we can't let that happen again because that's a new strategy that they're going to run with. So we have to act like we're tough on crime too so that we don't lose some of these white voters. We got to be tough on crime too. So that's why the Clintons, remember, people, we sit up here talking about the Clintons' first black president or whatever. Remember, Hillary Clinton was on that super predator stuff back in the 90s. Y'all remember she was giving those super predator speeches talking about black kids and the crime bill, Biden's crime bill, all of that stuff. Late 80s, early 90s, Bill Clinton and all of the three strikes. You see what I'm saying? So they started to say, hey, we're going to be tough on crime, too. We will show you we'll be tougher on crime with those Negroes. And all of the Democrats were on that vibe, just smashing down on black people, tough on crime, meaning let's smash down on the blacks. All these gangsters and crack dealers. That's when the crack sentencing was all crazy. Remember? those Rockefeller laws and all those stuff, that stuff where white boys got all types of powdered cocaine everywhere, but if a brother had a crack rock, that brother's getting 20, 30 years for a rock, a $5 rock. They started making all of these draconian laws towards black people. It was the damn Democrats. And the liberal media, they were in on it too. The whole wolf pack thing remember with the central park five the media out there in new york which was liberal they were using terms like wilding they're going around wilding and they're running they're like wolf packs it was a white liberal writer um what's his name peter hamill pete hamill i think that's his name he came up with that whole wolf pack thing um late 80s around the Central Park Five. They were making it like these are like animalistic kids running around raping and killing. The Democrats were doing that. Don't ever forget that. That was the Democrats doing that. Don't let them point the finger at Trump. And by the way, at the time, Trump was a Democrat. All right. Since they want to play that game, Trump was a Democrat, locked, stepped, and loaded with them. You see, don't let them play these games. See, sometimes people get short memories and they understand people get short memories and they sit up here and act like their hands were clean all along. No, they were not. It was Democrats who threw the Central Park Five under the bus. And there was a lot of that stuff going on up there in New York. There was a whole wave of them kind of being on this thing where they would smash down on black people there was that whole anti-black wave that was coming from the left. Bernard Getz was a white man who killed some black men on a subway and all the liberal white people in New York were applauding that. This was in the mid-80s. 
and the whole Yusef Hawkins situation that happened up there in Bensonhurst. All of this stuff was going on in the late 80s, early 90s. There was a big anti-black wave going on up there in New York. It was a major anti-black wave that the, the white liberal media and all the Democrats were pushing up there. So yeah, don't let them try to play in your face about the Central Park Five and then just point the finger at Trump putting out an ad. Trump didn't have any political power. He wasn't in political office then. Those Democrats were, and they were the ones prosecuting those brothers unjustly, all right? This is why we need to understand history out here. Uh, let me get some of these calls in here. Let's get T. Gray. Got an Ethiopian cat, I'm assuming. T. Gray, what's happening, man? Hop on, T. Gray. Hop on, man. We ain't got all day. Hop on, T. Gray. And while we're waiting on this dude to hop on in here, let's get DJ Genesis in the building. Hey, how are you? I'm good, DJ. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. So today I interviewed uh, the Oluwole, uh, uh, Ifa Kunle, chief of Oyotunji, and I was telling him about this FBA movement, mm -hmm. and they're going to the UN coming up, I think, like either next month, and I suggested possibly if you might be interested in actually like joining them because that's where all the money's at, right? All the kings and everybody go to the UN and discuss what their issues is. One of the issues they're going to be talking about is reparations to the UN. So I did mention your movement to him. Um, and I wanted to see if we could possibly set up a Zoom call to help you guys generate some funds for the FBA movement, go to the UN, actually discuss the movement and like kind of join forces. Well, yeah, let me let me see what they're because I don't know them. I have no idea who they are, what the ideally ideologies are. So I can't commit to anything that I don't know, because a lot of these folks pop up and they want to, you know, hey, let's hook up. And I don't know what their ideologies are. So let me uh, let me see something about what they're talking about, what their objective is, because um, this, to be honest, they sound like Pan-Africanist. And well, they kind of are, but right, and that's <laughs> see, that's the thing. See, that's the thing. I'm not clicking up with folks who's going to undermine what we're doing because what happens is we'll get around these folks and they got the pan African thing going, and we start talking about what we're supposed to get. And they're like, Well, all black people are supposed to get something, and you know, then we are well, we're they're talking about reparations in general for the black people. So, oh, uh, okay, so that's something else. I'm we're, we're right now, we're focused on reparations not not the, just that not africans but i'm saying like but for the black americans they're they're going to the un to try to get them involved but they're the but they're but they're african kings living over here they're claiming some type of african sovereignty right yeah that, that the oyotunji village is a sovereign right. nation inside of america yeah Right. See, this is why I got, let me see what they're talking about. Let me see what what's on their website, stuff like this, because, again, um, cats get to saying some weird stuff and some different stuff. and We ain't on the same page. So I want to see what all they're talking about. And you know, I'm, I'm all for building with everybody. But do they have a website? Uh, Oyo Tunji has a website. And but I want to. I can, I can like, like I said, I was going to set up a Zoom. You can like actually communicate with each other and really well, see what their their ideals are. And also, um, when it comes down to it, like getting land, all that stuff like that, that people are always talking about, they want to do. And like I said, going to the UN, that's where all the money is that could fund whatever kind of movement you're trying to do. We're always talking about, well, we, we need the funds. We need to like what, be able what, to what, fund, wait, wait, slow. what what funds from the UN? What 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 money is coming from the UN? Well, the the people that have the money are at the or go to these you go to the UN. The, the you know all the people that got money. No, they don't. I don't know. I don't know, sis. What does that mean? No, people like, don't go to the UN for they don't go to the UN for money. Well, you know how you like you know uh, to when you network with people and they got money. There, there are a lot of the people with money are at the UN, so they're able okay. to like tap into different funds from different places and be able to fund what they're trying to do. Okay. No. No. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sis. All right. No, 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 no. You don't get money at the UN. There's no money at the UN and you know, you're going to meet some people at the UN with some money. What? See, this is why I, I, I really don't jump on calls with just everybody because people be having random spoon ass ideas. 
No. See, sister, you couldn't even really articulate that. That's why I don't be jumping on calls and jumping on everybody's vibe and wave because I don't know what people are on. There's no, you don't get no money at the UN. This is why yet yeah, everybody, that's why I'm like, let me see what this person's website looks like. Let me just, let me read what you're about just to give me a clear idea. Because when, when people start talking, well, I, look, I got an organization with the Oyatunde um, tribe. And uh, what we do, we're squatting on land. We, we don't own it, but we squatting on it because it's owed to us. And we've been squatting here for 15 years. Now, some people call us homeless, but I call us sovereign. And um, what I want to talk to you about is clicking up. And then we go get some, some money from the U.N., Okay. Oh, oh, Lord, man. No, we, I like, we got to screen people. We we can't sit down with everybody. We can't sit down with everybody. Because uh, people come to me with ideas. I, I, I hate when people be hitting me up. Hey, Tariq, we got to talk. This is very important. It's real important. I can't tweet it on, on Twitter. I can't tweet it now. We need to talk. <laughs> Cause this, I got some, some real special here. This is some deep, deep stuff right here. We need to talk about him. This stuff gets you in trouble with the government. We need to talk. And we talk on the phone, and then it's some random spoon bullshit. Now, listen, listen. I'm glad you called me. Now, first of all, I got all the hidden colors. I really appreciate those. But listen here, listen. I, I got something that's going to change this game, and we is going to get reparations. Listen, I'm from a planet called Sputnik. All right. I am not from Earth. I look like an Earthling, but I am not. I traveled here 13,000 years ago. I'm 14,000 years old. All right. I use a lot of sea moss and honey. When you use sea moss and honey, that preserves your melanin. A lot of folks don't know that. That's the secret. Yeah? That's the secret. That's the secret right there. Honey and sea moss. So I'm going to start, and a special sea moss that I bought from my planet, okay? My planet has special radioactive sea moss. I brought it with me as a child, all right? <laughs> I need you to invest. <laughs> I need you to carry it at the Hidden History Museum. I want to set up a booth at the Hidden History Museum, and we sell it. I give you 40% of the profits, and I'll give you, and, and we're going to use that for gas money for my spaceship. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, I'm on the phone like, what the fuck? Oh, God, man. These random spoons is random spoons ass ideas. What's up, Biden? Hey, what's up, Tariq? Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate it. Um, I was out of two questions um i remember you saying that you were thinking about making a dr uh francis crest welsing uh documentary yeah yeah have you thought about making an actual movie like just you know like get an actress and no 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 it would be better if it's a documentary because i can get all the people that were influenced by her um all the people that learned under her that would be more effective i think you know, a documentary about her life would definitely be way, way more effective. Okay, bet. Uh, my second question is, uh, have you heard from Charlemagne or the Breakfast Club people to get you on, man? Like, because, you know, they always get Umar, but I think Umar's very, this all-inclusive pan-Africanism, which is not really, you know, uh, like, it's not like on the FBA lineage talk conversation, which is very deep. He's very just kind of all over the place. I think that's why they like to get him, because he's not really effective mm. so have you heard from Charlemagne at all that's it. I, ha I haven't I haven't talked and I'm, I'm cool with Charlemagne I just I haven't heard from him in years but I'm still cool with him but you know you know they can reach out to me if they want to holler at me they, they know how to find me so you know, that's what it is you got that baby on here every time you have I see this picture of these of, of Christian Rock's baby nah, I changed my picture bro you don't see it it's, it's no it's just you still got the picture of the baby get that baby off that thing oh, all right. <laughs> change that picture all right all right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, let's see who we have. A lot of folks in here. Um, let me see. We got Clown. Let's get Clown.
Let's get clown in here. All right, let's get clown in here. All right, clown, where you at? You want to talk? All right, clown ain't trying to talk. And the alchemist, okay, we got the alchemist in here. Okay, the alchemist, what's up? God damn, these smashing grabs are crazy. Yeah, um, the alchemist, what's up, man? I mean, y'all, y'all not gonna okay, get. Okay, this, 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 this is the. Oh, by the way, this is the hungry Ghanaian. Uh, not Ghanaian. No, Guinean. He's a a dude from Guinea, or he said he's from Guinea. Then he says he's from Ethiopia. So this is a shamed. He's a shameful tether who's ashamed to admit where he's really from. But go ahead. Y'all need to forget about reparation, bro. Y'all not gonna get. Well, so why are you so concerned? Why are you so worried about us not getting nothing? Because you failed in your homeland, this Sir Major. Is this the same tether? Where you at, Sir Major? Is this the same tether that was in your space? Where, sir? When you are talking about reparation, can we get that too, or it is only for y'all FBA? Now, why would you about? get reparations? Cause we black. We all black. Okay, well, take your black ass back to Guinea. No, I, I was born here. I'm no, I don't even believe. No, you weren't even born here. Not with that accent. I, I'm, I was born here. I didn't grow up here. I just, I, I've been telling you that. You weren't born here. I'm a U.S. No, citizen. Well, you weren't born here. You're a tether. You, 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 y'all fled here. Okay. So you're not getting reparations. You don't, what do you, you're not going to get reparations because you're not owed reparations. You grew up in another country. Okay, let's say you Why don't get you get reparation, reparations right? from the people who colonized your ass and made you flee? Why are you not hollering at Britain? So how are y'all going to no, get reparations? No, no, no. How don't, much don't is going to be? No, no, no. How don't much worry. Is You're be? not qualified to get it, so why are you so worried and hating Britain? You, why you're why, why not don't you go to Britain? Why are you so shook? Because Britain didn't punk you out and bitch you out and you had to flee. Y'all going to bankrupt the no. country. Wait, it's just where your homeland is bankrupt, sir. You need to worry about that. You had to sell camel milk in order to get here, sir. So you're gonna go. You're gonna go, gonna go buy some stupid shit like Jordan that's and all good. Stuff. That, that's, that's good. That's that's good, sir. Jordan is better than your. Jordan is Jordan is better shit. than your flip flops, sir. That's what you're mad at. We got Jordans. Y'all got dusty flip flops with flies on them, sir. So that's why you're upset. All right, now get out of here. Boy, these tethers. Boy, they are so damn envious. And boy, the and family, this is why, as you see, this is why we've been undermined for so many years when it came to getting reparations. Because one of the things we would do was let every black face in the circle to talk about it. And we've had these little old deceptive, undermining, hating, low-key jealous tethers in the mix all the time sabotaging it from the inside. That's why we had, we didn't make progress until we said, hey, we need to delineate. We need to be very clear about who this reparations thing is going to be for. And also, we need to be very clear about who should represent foundational Black Americans and to represent our lineage. We kind of, we, we, we woke up with Obama. We got to admit, Obama woke us up. When we saw Obama, and his benign neglect and Eric Holder and his benign neglect. And we saw how much they went out of their way to not do anything to help us. We had to say, okay, where are these niggas from? Where are these other people from? We can't have people who are not from our lineage trying to represent us because they have dual allegiance and it's nothing to harm their conscience to, to neglect us. So we should have been delineating and not letting non-FBA people misrepresent us. This is why I don't want Kamala Harris running around here talking about she black and all of this. She's not from our lineage. Y'all can do all of these black performances all day. Kamala Harris is not a foundational black American, not going to be a good representative of us because she's already told us what the hell she ain't going to do. And the consensus on the streets, let's be real, a lot of black people on the streets are not feeling all of this performative blackness that she's trying to engage in. The streets ain't feeling it. That's why her poll numbers ain't really soaring 
like they're trying to make it out to be with these this convention, these conventions that's happening. That's not really winning over any new voters. You're just kind of singing to the choir to a, a certain degree. People ain't really buying it. People are like, okay, we've seen all of these performances. Okay, this is the BET Awards part two. Okay, when the award show is over, let's hear about these policies. Let's get Larry in the building. Larry? How are you guys doing? What's going I'm, on today? Was, we're good, Larry. Where are you from, Larry? Where am I from? North America. There you from go. Canada. Are you from Canada? Yes, but okay. also American. Also American. And, oh. uh Minnesota. Minnesota. So you, were you from Minnesota at first or were you in Canada first? I'm from Africa. Okay, I'm what part African, of that? I'm, I'm, I'm FA, foundational African. Okay, you're some, that means Somalian. You're Somali, yes, right? I'm a, no, I'm a foundational African. FA. That's what I am. Foundational African. But you're not in Africa, so how can you be foundational? I am in, I, I am in Kenya right now. Okay, well, damn it. You just said you it's were like in Kenya. 2 p.m. No, no, I'm from there, but I'm from Kenya right now. I'm in Kenya right now. Oh, okay, you all over. I'm in the motherland. I'm actually in the motherland as we speak. So, what are you doing in Kenya? What, as a foundational African, I've returned home. I've seen the uh, situation progressing in the West. Uh, but, but things are getting out of hand. I mean, the state has. What are you doing uh, in Kenya? What are you doing in Kenya? Investing, are you investing, investing in land. You know, looking at. Uh, I mean, Africa's got a lot of land. People are looking to leave, and uh, I'm looking to come in. Uh, so I don't believe that. Heading, that, that everybody that, wants everybody wants to come to you. That you guys like, are. That sounds like cap. You, you sound like that. That sounds like cap. You, you haven't gotten your lie together. No, no, you, no, no. Why? You, why do you, you want to divide you, the you FAs told us, from the FBAs? That's, okay, you you didn't told about five lies on here. All right, so now everything you say is in bad faith. I didn't call you in about four or five different lies. No, okay. no, no. You're a postal code foundational black guy. You're you're in a postal code. Okay, that's not even witty. Okay, so you're trying your little goofy, corny, four chan. No, no, brother, brother, you're. Now, why are you? Why are you? A, no, okay, where, why, why are you too ashamed? You tethers are so ashamed to admit where you're really. Who's a tether? What is a tether? You want you, to get people killed. You. Why are you so ashamed to admit where you're from? You're getting into all of this goofy talk to deflect from the fact that you're ashamed of where you're from. You are where I'm from. Okay, that your phone is janky. That's another thing. We know you're from janky phone land. Okay, well, so where are you blocking me, brother? Let me speak. I didn't mute I you. I, I'm, I I'm listening. Mute. I didn't mute okay. you. That was a meerkat jumping on your phone. That wasn't me. That's on okay. your. All right. So no, what is this tethering? Thing. What is this tethering? And why is there a division and, between the Africans and the the Africans, the foundational Africans, and the African Americans? Uh, especially for the African Americans who want to invest in Africa and return to their, you know, to their roots, you guys are out here preaching hate, and you guys are going to have problems for them in Africa. I mean, you guys we, represent we a very how vast, you, knowledgeable how African come group. You, how, right? come you're, how come you're so tribalistic in Africa? How we preach in hate? You ain't even together in Africa. Explain that. Go ahead, man. Stop trying to troll your way through this. Yes, yes. Individualism now, why, why is under so attack tribal? in the West. Why you can't so out tribal? tribe. They're bringing tribe. Yes, they're bringing tribe to America. You can't. You you can't do tribe. This is why you're trying to get FBA thing going. This why are you so tribal in Africa? We are tribal. We want individualism in Africa, but America is promoting tribalism now. So you're not going to be able to win us when it comes to. Okay. Um, let me get some more people. He's just tether babbling. He's just saying shit for attention. He ain't even making no sense. He sounds dumb and corny. All right, let me get some more people on here. I'm not about to hear no goofy tether babble. I'm not about to hear that. All right, let's get Lex Jetson in the building. No, Larry, we, we're not going to hear lame, cornball, tether troll babble. It's lame, lame and unfunny. It's not even witty. You're a time-wasting troll. Time-wasting tether troll. We ain't trying to hear it. You're not going to waste our time in between Uber Eats orders. We're not doing that. Lex Jets, what's happening? Hey, Yo, Tariq, now she was popping when she was going on. I'm good, Lex. Where you from, brother? I'm from New York. There you go. I hear a Caribbean accent. Jamaica or Haiti? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Jamaican, but I was born here, though. 
There you go. There you go. So what's on your mind? How's New York right now? What's the vibe in New York? It's it's interesting. You know, like every honestly, every zip code got a different vibe. But when you go to the city, it's a it's a crazy situation in the city. But where I'm at, not we've seen a little bit of it, but it's not wild. Okay. There it is. So what else is going on with you, bro? What's on your mind? Well, um, I don't know if the title of this was you referring to Beyonce. They they were saying that Beyonce was supposed to um perform yeah. there. Yeah, they finessed the viewers. They knew she wasn't going to perform. They just put that out there so that they can finesse some views, man. Yo, Tariq Nasheed, you remember when they said Kai Sanat was going, was um Kamala wanted to pull up on Kai Sanat? Yeah. He, he said something like, even the music blogs was messaging him. When, now I'm thinking like with TMZ, because look, if TMZ said, they don't just put anything out for no reason. So do you think that TMZ is is with the party? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, they all clicked in. Yeah, yeah, 100%. They all clicked in. The, the liberal media, <clears throat> they all clicked in with the DNC. That's why all the Hollywood people are such um, ball kisses for the damn Democrats. Because Hollywood is all liberal. It's liberal as hell. That's why all the black entertainers got a shucking jive for the damn Democrats. Be out here buck dancing. So, yeah, it was a finesse. They finessed people. They knew Beyonce wasn't going to perform, but, you know, they're, they're doing desperate moves. This is what they do. It's clown ready. Clown, you ready? All right, let me get clown out of here. I see Gabriel, the Democrat, in here. Let's get... um. Ogby, let's get Ogby in here. Ogby. What's up, Ogby? All right. Ogby ain't saying nothing. I'm going to give you three seconds to get on Ogby, then I'm going to get Sue in here. What's up, Yoshi? I see you down there, Yoshi. I see Wani. I see Nasty. All right. Sue Pool. What's up, Sue? All right, Sue, you want to unmute your microphone? Okay. Hey. There it is. What's up, Sue? I'm good. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, Sue. Where's that accent from? I'm Nigerian. There you go. Where are you living in New York? No, Atlanta. Oh, in Atlanta. Okay. So what's on your mind? Yeah. So um, I was wondering, so um, Obama is not um, black? He's not a foundational black American. So why are you like him um, separating blacks? I mean, I, I don't get it. Because we have a unique lineage that other people don't have. That's not me. That's <laughs> our lineage. We have a different lineage. And who is we? Um, foundational black Americans, the non-immigrants. There's a group of people in this country who don't come from lineage of immigrants, and that's us. That we we're unique in that respect, right? Oh, this so. Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel black is black anywhere in the world. Really? Are we not? I mean, are we not? Well, I've seen a lot of people, hell, from Nigeria, say they're not black; they're Nigerian. So, do you <laughs> find black? You are either white or black. You're either white or black. Um, or, or, yeah? No. Either... A lot of people identify as whatever their ethnic group or nationality or whatever is. I don't. A lot of Nigerians have said, I'm not black, I'm Nigerian. So they will identify often as their, their nationality or their tribe or something like that. And some people... When I fill out form in the U.S., right? When I'm filling out my forms in the U.S., official forms. It yeah. said that um, black American or um, black African. Uh huh. That black is still there. Mm hmm. But we are foundational black Americans. So we're from a different lineage. We didn't immigrate here. We actually built the country. So we have a more unique relationship with this nation. This is our homeland. That's a question. Right? Go ahead, ma'am. 
Have you ever um, done your DNA? Yes, I have. Several. Where times. are you from? In Africa. Uh, oh, my DNA goes all over Africa. I got some DNA in the area now known as Nigeria. I got some DNA over in Mozambique. There's some DNA up in Europe. Um, and truth be told, almost everybody on the planet has a degree of DNA in Africa, Europe, or Asia, or mm -hmm. all everybody does. That doesn't negate the fact that I'm still a foundational black American. See? Oh, okay. Is, is it an advantage of being um, a foundational black American? Is there any advantage of being one? If there was an advantage or even a disadvantage, that doesn't change the lineage. The lineage is locked in. The is, there any, is there any advantage? You make it sound like there is a special advantage for being a foundational black American. I don't see any advantage over we who, according to you, are not um, black Americans. I mean, I don't see the difference. When they see black, they see black. They don't care if you're black American or African American. Oh, uh, no, 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 because no, no, no. See, no, they don't say just black unless it's, they only say black when it's negative. Let me tell you something. When y'all do something positive, you make sure to put that no, I mean, I was king. No, no, no. When you no, when, when they see, down, when they down, see you black, you are black. They don't even ask. Slow down. Slow down. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. When, when, when you do something positive, you make sure to put that Nigerian first. No, 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 no. You, you are going yeah, 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 yeah. to you, you are going to a different aspect. Okay. No, ma'am. No, no, no. Let's be going. There are be, good people now and bad people everywhere. Abasola, let's slow it down. Let me let me put you on mute. Let's slow it down. Because you're going to hear this when one of y'all come over here and you get a doctorate degree or you get some kind of scholarship or you win an award. Boy, that Nigerian is the first thing out your mouth. You don't say black. Nigerian stand up. Nigeria stand up. Nigeria. Ebo, you start naming them tribe. Y'all make sure that that win is going to go to you. And not us, not all black people, all right? So let's be very clear. And it, uh, when it's something negative, then we all black. Or if we do something constructive, hey, can we share? Because aren't we all black? No, we're foundational black Americans, man. We have a unique lineage. It's not a bad thing. It's not a not an insult. Why is, I in, why is our lineage an insult to people? Why do y'all look at that as being offensive when we look at our unique and distinct lineage, ma'am? Go ahead, Sue. Go, Sue, unmute your microphone, dear. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. The yeah. whites don't see you in Nigeria no and You I are black and you are black. It doesn't matter if you are Hold on. a black, Hold on. black American. Let me slow you down again. The whites don't see you. It don't matter how the white supremacists see us because a lot of you non-FBA people, you don't see the white supremacists the same way we do. We look at the white supremacists as an enemy. When we see white supremacists, we challenge white supremacists consistently. We look at them differently than you look at them. Okay? That's what makes us unique. When the white supremacists show up to your village in Africa, y'all act like Jesus showed up. When they show up to our neighborhood, we lock the doors and keep our mouths shut because we know there's some trouble that's about to happen. We look at the white supremacists differently, ma'am. So the way they look at us, we know that they look at black people globally as victims of white supremacy. We understand that. But how we react to them and how we challenge them is unique. And we, Foundation of Black Americans, we've been the only ones consistently going at the bumper of these white supremacists. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, did she bounce? Okay, she bounced. Okay. I wasn't going to let her tether babble now. She thought she was going to babble because that's what they do when they feel like they're losing an, an argument. They just start, they, they think they're just going to just talk over you. Well, first of all, the white man, they look at us all the same. We're all one big nigga to the white man. No, no, I don't want to hear all that. I don't want to no, no, slow it down. I don't want to hear all that. No, no, I don't want to hear. Don't you call up here talking about we all black. Man, the minute y'all win anything, the minute y'all get a, a semblance of a wind under your belt, boy, you make sure it's not shared with us. Like, 
Damiano, you just got a scholarship for three colleges. Yes, I am from Ghana. Ghana, stand up. I am not like those niggas. See how hard I whack? I whack hard, not like those FBA niggas. Yeah, I don't want to hear all that we all black and y'all got all types of janky words for us. No. Y'all sit up here and call us a cottage. Y'all been calling us a cottage for decades. Y'all been calling us all types of derogatory little words. Stay away from the Akata niggas. And when we say, okay, well, y'all do you. We'll do us. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Why are you niggas divisive? No, 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 no. We don't play that game. We're going to speak truth to power out here. We are a unique lineage. We are a unique ethnic group. And we got a lot of scores on our board. Y'all put some on yours. All right, because we, we're taking our ball and going to another court with it. And our ball court has a lot of scores on the board. These other folks ain't got no scores on the board. They've been using our scoreboards. Let's keep it real. We've been putting up scores for everybody, only to be disrespected. When we take the ball away, oh, it's like, hey, wait, wait, nigga, wait, what the... Well, uh, I can't do it under my own, nigga. Look how hostile they call up, the tethers. Your niggas are not going to get reparations. What about me, nigga? I'm black too. Now everybody want to be black. Now everybody want to claim black. No, we're foundational black Americans. That's a whole thing. They trying to make Kamala black. Y'all, everybody, just sit your ass down and leave us alone. You are not from our lineage. Everybody's trying to be damn black now, trying to cosplay as foundational black Americans, running around with collard greens and hot sauce, and y'all even, ain't even talking about preparing the greens right. I put the greens in the bathtub. And she, what? Shut up. Good grief. Not divisive. Y'all just be you, do you. And we do us, and we're not letting all these foreigners represent us. That's what it is. That's the new norm. We don't want people who are not from our lineage representing us. They haven't done a good job. There's too many dual allegiances there. All right, let's get J.S. in the building. We'll try some of these new faces in here. J.S. in the building. What's up, J.S.? JS, where you at, brother? I'm right here. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. How are you, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just wanted to add a couple things, if you don't mind. Go ahead, brother. Well, just wanted to to make a point. If anyone here is not, um, you know, American of African, like foundation American of African descent, what I wanted to say was just two main points to people who are who don't fit this description. The first one is. Um, like I asked, she, she said she was Nigerian. So I would ask the question, what's the point of calling yourself Nigerian? When right. someone, when someone says you're Nigerian, it means you're from a certain region, a certain region of the world. You share a common lineage, you know, uh, you may even share certain features and things like that. So it's a distinction, right? Yeah. If I were to go to Nigeria today, would people consider me Nigerian, even though all my ancestors are from America? Right. Yeah. So that's, so the first thing to tell people who are, who don't fit this description we're like like he was saying we're an ethnic group unto ourselves so it's just a distinction first of all right yeah and the second reason that it's important for us to have this distinction is because we don't want people representing us politically especially uh that don't share a common lineage or a common experience that we have now if they do represent us politically we want them to speak to our interests or be, re be respectful enough to say you know what this is not my lineage and I, and and there there are 30 40 million people foundational americans of african descent that can speak for themselves and that's how you be respectful i wouldn't go to nigeria jamaica ghana and speak for the population of people who live there who have a collective experience in certain um certain issues that they're dealing with in that society so it's really it's really that simple other yeah. than that i don't have anything against anyone of african descent those are the only two real things that really define, I would say, you know, our distinction. We have a right to that distinction, just like people have a right to call themselves Jamaican or Nigerian or whatnot. And then the last thing would be we have the right to speak to our collective interests in mm -hmm. this country. And and I'll relinquish the mic with that being said. My man, man, you summed it up perfectly, brother. 
you articulated that very well. Man, we're the only group of people where folks think they can come in and just assume leadership positions under us and we ain't supposed to say nothing. We can't go to Jamaica and um, Haiti and countries in Africa and just go over there and assume leadership and start telling them what they should do in their political circles or their tribal circles or whatever. They don't allow that, especially if we're saying what, if we are undermining them, we go over there talking about what they shouldn't get. How we look going over to Africa talking about y'all don't need nothing from Britain. Just pull y'all self up by the bootstraps. They would stone us for doing that. We don't do that. And you're not going to be over here as a foreigner interfering in our political and social affairs, telling us what we shouldn't get. We got a major problem with that. And then y'all act like you ain't supposed to get checked on it. Yeah, you getting checked. Well, you, you niggas are xenophobic. Well, whatever you want to call it, you ain't going to be up in our business telling us what we should and shouldn't get. And you ain't even from our damn lineage. Yeah, we got a we we feel a certain way about that. And we should have been on this wave a long time ago. Claude Anderson had been trying to warn us about this for, for decades. Not only Claude Anderson, you know who else was trying to warn us too? Bobby Hemmett. Go back and listen to some of Bobby Hemmett's stuff. Bobby Hemmett from like shit 25 years ago. He was like, "Hey man, the the white supremacists are bringing some of those um some of these African cats over here." And they're going to elevate them into like leadership positions and they're going to have these Africans trying to undermine us. This is what Bobby Hemmett was saying back in like the early 2000s. Bobby Hemmett was warning us. He was right on the money. He was like, hey, man, they're going to use African immigrants as overseers over here, dude. We, gonna, we better watch out for that. And hell, that's what we got with Obama. An African overseer, they made sure to get somebody who wasn't from our lineage. Because let me tell you something, they understand lineage. The white supremacists, they understand lineage. They understand people from different lineages have different energies, so they know what they're doing. They're very scientific when it comes to lineage and genealogy and ancestry. They know what it is. They understand that a person who's representing the culture, who's from the lineage, they're going to have a natural camaraderie with those people. And they will be a little more skeptical if they're going to try to <clears throat> undermine them. Because the white supremacists, they elevate certain black folks knowing that they're going to undermine the black masses. They know that if a person is from the lineage, that person might say, hey, I don't want my people undermined. So let me go warn them of something. Let me flip on these white supremacists. They know that we're capable of doing that. They know that a lot of the, the performative Samboisms, it'll go so far with, with foundational black Americans. It's more performative than, than, than anything else, but it will go so far. It'll, it'll cut off and cats will flip when the white supremacists least suspect, expect it. Because they dealt with um, performative sambos who turned on them before. So they know not to trust FBA who's acting like sambos. They know that they can turn, they'll flip. This happened a lot during slavery, um, where black folks would be up here shucking and jiving. And we, we did a scene in the movie American Maroon where we depicted a scene like that, a scene that actually happened in real life. If you look at the movie American Maroon, we talked about how Andrew Jackson went down in Florida and the Seminoles, they were using guerrilla warfare tactics and they understood how the white supremacist mindset was. The white supremacists, they they thought that black people were shucking and jiving pickaninnies. So they used that to their advantage to get these white supremacists to lower their guards. So Andrew Jackson and his... Um, his army, some of his um, soldiers were in the swamps down there looking for some of the black Seminoles who were the runaways. And then they came across um, a group of black men at a campfire playing like a fiddle in, in a, 
a little ukulele or whatever, kind of shucking and jiving and dancing. And then they let their guard down when they saw him. They're like, oh, these are just some little old plantation Negroes. And then what happened once the Andrew Jackson and those guys let their guard down, the brothers in the trees came out on their ass and swooped down and started shooting down at him and ran him up out of there. So they knew how to use sambos and buck dances to their advantage to make these white supremacists lower their guards, you see. But they know if they get a foreign sambo, that foreign sambo won't have the same allegiance to us, just like Obama. Obama sat up here and let us get slaughtered by these race soldiers and did nothing. You see, when you have black people who are from the lineage who are in political positions, a lot of times they will um, do things for the community unless, you know, they got some kind of sexual agenda or whatever in many cases. Um, but even Marion Barry, he's another example. People say what they want to say about Marion Barry. He was a foundational black American. Yeah, he hit the, the crack pipe a few times, but Marion Barry looked out for the black community in Washington, D.C. He made sure the people were good. Um, he, he did his thing. He did his thing. And, and, and other politicians, too, from the lineage looked out. So it's very important to understand the lineage. They know the white supremacist understands lineage and who's capable of what. All right, let's get, um, let me see, Mr. Black, Mr. Black Family Prophet. All right, Mr. Black, what's going on, brother? Mr. Black. Hey, how you doing, Tariq? Good to talk to you, man. My brother, how are you, sir? Man, all I can say is, my brother, you didn't change my life in many ways. And you and the FBA family are have been outstanding. Yes, sir. I got a question real quick. Yes, sir. You did a you did an outstanding uh, broadcast about, you know, you gave those six points on why we should leave parties. Yeah. And and now they've got this darn earn the black vote initiative out here. What do you think about that? Now, what are they doing to earn the black vote? That's what that's my question. Well, yeah, and that's an excellent question because I would take your all, all six points that you had on that broadcast, I wrote them down. Yeah. And and I would consider that the earn the black vote initiative moving forward, you know, so moving past this election, I think there needs to be a serious engaging piece on how earning the black vote is tied to reparations, lineage based reparations. Right. Right. Yep. And yeah. I'll land there. But Thank I, you. You know, yep. Yep. Thank you so much. And you know what? I just saw a clip of Vivek. Vivek was talking. Somebody asked him, about reparations and Vivek was like, you know, I've been against race-based reparations because that's divisive. Race-based reparations is not good. He kept saying race-based and yes, it, I don't agree with race-based reparations. It should be lineage-based. See, we got to watch these little words they try to say because we're not going for race-based res um, reparations. We're not going for race based. This is why when folks come in these circles, some of these tethers be like, well, what about me? I'm black too. And some of these pan Africanists, they start talking about race based reparations. Family, when they do that, they know they're going to mess it up doing that. They are doing that because they know they're going to mess it up. Just like the sister called earlier talking about the. Hold on, Malik. Hold on. Hold on. Slow down. You see me talking, Malik. Hold on. Slow down, brother. I, I get you in a second. Now, you just jumped on and made me lose my train of thought. Um, okay. Now, what, what do you got to say? You made me lose my train of thought, dude. Malik, what's happening, man? Malik, I'm your microphone. And you talk now, man. Don't don't interrupt me. And now you don't want to talk. Unmute your microphone. <laughs> Malik, hop on and say what you got to say, man. Okay, he, he's going in between orders now. All right. Let me get Brother Hollis Lewis in here. 
Hey, how you doing, brother? Brother Hollis, how, how are you, bro? I'm doing well. I am a state legislator out of West Virginia, and I was currently at the DNC right now. Oh, really? What's yes, what's what's the vibe out there right now? The vibe is good, man. You know, it's a lot of good energy. Um, and to your points, uh, you know, I agree with some of the things you say, but yeah. uh, I think the problem with uh, you know the no vote type of you know sentiment is that it hurts us down ballot. You know, so again, yeah. I, I, I agree with, you know, we, we definitely want to have a black agenda, something specifically for us, you know, to address our needs and our grievances. But when you talk about no vote, people take that literal, and they end up not voting for anybody. And, you know, in order to cultivate good candidates, we got to start somewhere. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, we got to shake this damn table up a little bit and let the Democrats know, hey, man not going to be business as usual. They see what's going on out here. The Democrats, they've turned the DNC into the damn BET Awards, yet they have no black agenda. They don't have anything for us. And they got all of our resources being allocated to non-citizens, and that's a problem. And they can't keep operating like that because it's killing us out here. So we need you guys on the inside to really stomp down on that, man. We everybody ain't gonna be living uh, having these little cushy positions anymore, and the black masses ain't getting what they're supposed to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I and again, I, I, I agree with you, but I just think, like I said, it's hard for us to, you know, obviously, a lot of us, you know, don't get support monetarily or even in kind donations from our community. Right. So again, when you have an initiative like, you know, don't vote, people just take that for face value. And they don't understand we still need good prosecutors. We still good need uh good state and local legislators in order to, you know, cultivate candidates so we can move up and down the ballot. You see what I'm yes. saying? So yes. that, that's I get that would be my only grievance. Like I said, I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan. I've got a lot of your work. So that would yeah. be all agreements with your, uh, you know, this this. Well, 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 since you're in, you're already in. You we you need to sit down and talk to us, and that's what we can do for some of the black folks out there in your district. You understand, so that we can see people are on code and people are ready to do the work, so that you can get more support from them. If they see that you're really willing to use your position to really stump for the community, I, I guarantee you get all the support you need. Yeah, and that's me, brother. I'm definitely down to do all that. And I have been, I got a record even prior to, you know, being in this position now. I'm definitely down for the community. Like I said, I just want us to see, be us more engaged. And like I said, even to your end, we have to cultivate candidates and we got to support those candidates. Like uh, your brother, what's what's uh, what's my man from uh, Marcel. South Marcel. Marcel Dixon, yes, yeah. indeed. We got to support candidates if we want to see the change. And to that point, you know, we don't have a, you know, we don't have an entry as far as Republicans, so Democrat is the way for us to go. So yes, I, indeed. You see what I'm saying? Yes, indeed, my man. I feel you. So we'll we'll talk, brother. We'll talk, brother Hollis. No doubt. I appreciate you calling. Be safe out there, brother. All right, it's brother Hollis. So yeah, man. With um, yeah, man. With these, with the politicians, man. Yeah, we're letting people know. Hey, we we got to get some out here. We got to get some. Let's get black soil. Black soil, what's happening? What's happening, Tariq? How are you, black soil? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing at Chatsworth? Um, I'm good out here in Chatsworth. It was a what? shooting out here, but what's going on? Well, I mean, thank God uh, you're safe. Tariq, I want to ask you, so which African institutions speak against reparation? Which reputable African institutions speak against reparation? But well, y'all don't really have too many institutions, but you just got just tethers who come over here. So y'all don't got too many institutions. That's why y'all fleeing. So you got a lot of tethers who come over here. Like like the call earlier came over here speaking okay. against reparations. Also, we have um, people who come over here from Africa and who get in reparation circles and start undermining it, talking about what we shouldn't right. get. You had an um, African chick, Lovey Ajayi, whatever her name is, she bragged about getting an award for talking about how we shouldn't get reparations and some tethers at the NAACP gave her some kind of award. So we've had several people from Africa and the Caribbean get in our circles talking about we shouldn't get reparations. Obama, he's an African, um, was against reparations and didn't do a damn thing for us. So the list goes on and on, but go ahead. I don't remember um, Obama stating anywhere that he's against reparation. 
Yeah, Obama. Okay, Obama was against reparations. How? When? When did he say that? There's an interview what he did with this guy. I think on um this BT interview where he um spoke that he wasn't for reparations. So yeah, he was adamant about that. Wow, well, so wasn't for it. Well, I mean, I know you're trying to cook something up. It's whatever. Listen, it's not whatever. Is this, is, and, 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 is, this is a Pia. This is a Pia, right? You know this is up here. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, your name ain't Black. Well, you, you, okay, yeah, you changed your name. You got so many Tether troll accounts. Nope. So why are you, nope. not, why are you not using nope. your regular account, account? No, I'm not using it because I don't want certain people to follow me. That's it. But back to the case. Back to the point. Listen, you ever wonder why Africans come out here and they fly their flag so high? Have you ever yeah, wondered why, why? why? Great question. Why? Why you fly your flag so high in the place you fled from? Because no, because we love where we come, we came from. We don't it's claim. Stop it. Listen, no. listen, listen, listen. Just we stop don't. it. Don't, don't no, tell no, 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 you don't love where you came. Y'all can't wait to flee. You got people in the Atlantic Ocean on inner tubes right now getting the hell away from those places, dude. You don't love that. Stop it. Stop. You're not going to lie tonight. I don't want to hear tether lies. You don't love it. In fact, when you come over here with your family, they threaten to send you back home. They use sending you home as a threat. If you don't get good grades, I'm going to send you back to Ghana. Oh, no, mama. Don't do it. Don't do it, mama. I'll be a good nigga. Don't do it, mama. They they threaten to send you home and you crap your pants. Don't tell me how much you love your homeland. No, you fly those flags. No, no, no. Let, let's keep it real. You fly those flags high over here to let white people know you're different from us. That's what you do that for. You fly them flags to say, hey, look, white man, I am not like these niggas. I'm different. I work hard, and I don't have a chip on my shoulder, and I don't want reparations. That's a signal to the white people to let them know you're different. Don't tell me how much you love your homeland, and then you done fled, and y'all ain't even building toilets over there. You ain't building nothing over there. You getting the hell on. You don't love that. So we love our lineage, Foundational Black American. That's why we stay and we stand on business. We've always had a love for our lineage and our people and our land. You know? We walk it like we talk it. Yeah? You know? I mean, ain't about to sit in here and tether lie. D. Dillon, what's happening? D. Dillon, what's up, brother? Uh, what's up, Sarit? Uh, so, you don't think America got something to do with why all these countries is fucked up and people fleeing here? Like, you don't think they got a hand in what's going on, like, internationally? Do I think who? Do you think America, do you think they don't have a hand in what is going on internationally, which is also making people flee these countries? And come here and come to the UK and other countries that are going through similar things. Not just America, the white supremacists. The white supremacists are global. It's the white supremacists that's meddling in the business of all the nations because they control them directly or indirectly. Definitely, definitely. But who do you think in charge of the white supremacists' uh, global power? It's um, Europe and European descendants. Who run this country and who run the UK? And, okay, and so my point is, we you always going at Africans fleeing the country and shit, and it's like, bro, you know, it's a bigger point out here than that, yo. It's like you giving surface level knowledge to people who don't know what's going on internationally. So let's let's let's, let's give deep level knowledge. Yeah, if the the white supremacists over here are the problem that people are fleeing, how come we ain't fleeing? I mean, shit ain't fucked up as it is in other countries, bro. <laughs> Why isn't it? I mean, we have somewhat of a structure. I'm not, you feel me? America ain't 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 the worst country. It ain't the Why best. is it not? Why is it not the worst country? 
See, we're getting deep right now. How, why is Man, it not? Bro, it's a lot. It's a lot. It goes a lot. You know, it's, it's let's, deep, let's, yeah. get, let's get to it. Why? Like a lot what? Why is it why is it good over here, especially for black people? It's good for black people over here. Why? I mean, I mean, it's it's okay for black people over here. We, we oh, definitely no. got a lot of shit going it's okay. on. It's okay. It's good. Why everybody fleeing? If you got money. Yeah. Why okay, why is everybody fleeing over here if it's just okay? I mean, because I mean, first of all, it's a lot of people who come over here and they like, God damn, this shit fucked up. They just driving Uber. They don't go home. Amazon. Turn around and go back though. It ain't that fucked up. It, they don't go back. Oh, nah, real shit. But I'm just saying they come over here because they're provided an image, you know what I'm saying? Where they some motherfuckers literally think it's gold in the street over here. Like I've heard motherfuckers say that, like come from Senegal. I, you know what I'm saying? This back in like 2015. Met a nigga. He was tall as shit, like 6'4". He like, yo, I literally thought it was gold in the street, yo. Like the he way they it. used to talk about America. I thought no damn gold was in the street. They know I mean, this is... I mean, we don't is, know what they think over there, bro. Well, we... They, they know you it's better grow than, up in that country. You, yeah, yo, you speak they down on the country they, and they say know they ignorant, better, they running with goats. They, they know it's better than there. They know that, sir. They know that. No, right? it, it, it probably is better, but but why is it better? Because America it, has a hand in why these countries are fucked up, which is my Okay, own. but the thing is, if America is effed up, which it the white supremacists are, not America, the white supremacists, because we're American Foundation of Black Americans. We're Amer we represent what America is really supposed to be. The white supremacists, yeah, they're messed up. And we we live right here with them. But we stand on business. We stood up to them. That's why everybody else is able to come over here and eat, because we got the resources we needed from them. Instead of letting them just replenish everything and deplenish everything and squander it and then nobody gets nothing like they do over there in Africa and the Caribbean, where a small group of white people up here got all the resources and all these black masses are sitting over here in shanty. We're like, hell no, we ain't playing that game. Y'all giving us something. We getting up off these resources. And that's why everybody else who's melanated can come over here and enjoy them because of us. You understand? Okay, so with that being said, though, um, you say we stood on business, right? That's but right. us standing on business, I don't think that's necessarily why we are in the situation we are in. We are in the situation we're in. Cause it was somebody idea in their head, like yo, if we do it this way, it's gonna work. Just like they doing in Israel. If we do it this way, it's gonna work. But that shit's what, not really what, working over there. Cause they idea? have a, a older about? mind state. What are you talking about? You losing me, brother. I don't know what so you're talking about. What I'm about, saying who, is who America think? know how to psych people out, do a lot of psychological shit. You a part of it. They use you as a part of it. That's how why so? I come up here and talk to you sometimes. I be trying to figure out what you really know and what you how really so? don't know. What? What are you talking about? You're just saying stuff. What are you talking I'm about? I'm not just saying stuff. All right, all right, all right. That's what I'm saying, bro. Just you got you, uh, you got to elaborate. You're just saying a bunch of gibberish and not elaborating. What do you mean? All right, America has a hand in what is going on internationally, bro. You feel me? So now, when you what, say a black, you say that? black Americans stood on business, like America is a certain way because somebody had an idea, bro. You get what I'm saying? Who had an idea? What are you saying? Uh, them old motherfuckers in the 70s. It's like, okay, we're going to have a country like this. You have freedom of speech. You have this, that, and the third. You get what I'm saying? It's circumstantial. Black people stood on business, or I mean, you say they're not black, but people in Haiti stood on business too. They took their country back. But right. guess what? It, it didn't make sense for the white people who was in control to stay there and build on it. They just let niggas have it. If they did that in America, which they kind of did in New York in the 70s, what if that was the whole country? That shit could happen, yo. Like, niggas okay, buying what? buildings. Remember right, the right. Bronx in the 70s? What is, what is like, Bro, you all over the place, man. Okay, bro. You all over the of place. Course, I'm, all, I'm all over the place to these listeners you got in here who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But you know what I'm getting at, bro. I have no idea what you're talking about. You, okay, you bro. Haiti to America's messed up and to somebody in the 1700s had an idea. See, what is just, America? Hey, America is an idea, bro. Every country is a fucking idea. Where is bro. your family from, man? Here we go with this shit again. We was doing this you, last bro, time, bro. You remember, bro? Come on, bro. I remember that little old nasty Baltimore accent. You called the okay, other day bro. under a different name. 
No, Bishop, hold up. Bishop. I never came Bishop. in this space under no different Aren't, name, bro. No, Don't no. do that, bro. Aren't you Nigerian? No, that's not me, bro. That's my man. That's not me, bro. That's a whole different person. No, bro. You come from a different lineage. That's why you're not, you, you're not trying to hear me, bro. Now oh, you trying to, oh, now you trying to poke oh, little bullshit. No, that's not no, me, bro. And you know that's no, not me. You that's know why you're doing all that circular people. babbling. So why are you trying to act like that's why you're doing all that circular babbling? You ain't from this lineage. You come, come on, from bro, with this bullshit. Now you scared of the conversation. You know that's not I'm, me. I'm you know of your me and my man's two different people, bro. You I'm actually know us both. I'm scared you know of that. your babble. You're trying to act. I'm scared of your just tether plebiscite babble. You're not I'm scared from Baltimore, of Baltimore. My people from Canada, Louisiana. No, 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 no. You come from a tether back. You don't know me, my nigga. You don't know what. I'm there's a lot of tethers in Baltimore. Why are you scared of the conversation all of a sudden, bro? Yeah, you're not scaring anybody with no, tethers. No, you scared of the that. conversation. I never said you're you were scared, scared of me, no, bro. You're, you're not that the deep. You're not that deep to scare anybody with babble. You're just babbling in circles. You're not scary. You're not even deep. You're, you're I'm not saying because I'm... you come you, you come from a tether background. That's why you're just talking in circles. Because you're too ashamed to admit that you come from a tether background. You're ashamed of your lineage, sir. We don't need shameful tethers speaking on our business. Because all you're doing yo, is talking. Come on, Tariq. Yo, I right, man, be better don't, than this, go ahead and get you some Igusi soup. All right? Go ahead. I don't want to hear none of this tether babble. These tethers think they're slick. You ain't from our lineage, dude. I'm from Louisiana. That's not even a Louisiana accent. That's a nasty little low ass Baltimore accent, dude. And Baltimore got a lot of them little undercover tethers out there. There's a whole bunch of them out there in Baltimore. You ain't slick. And he's probably like Caribbean or something, because Baltimore got a lot of these people with Caribbean um, ancestry. Yeah. Let's get Mr. E and J in the building. Just talking in circles ain't making a lick of damn sense. There's a lot of people had a thought in the 1800s and shit. That's how they do. All right, Mr. E and J, what's up, bro? Yo, what's up, Tariq? Hey, yeah, um, I just wanted to come spread the truth. Yeah, we got that nigga family pictures. <laughs> oh, you, you feel me? Uh, yeah, the jig is up, nigga. <laughs> we really been sparing you, nigga. We got this nigga in the pic with a dress on, nigga. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, but check it out. Hey, this nigga got this nigga got uh, a white and uh, Haitian parents. I'll let you guess which one's who. Oh damn. So yeah. So he he's Caribbean. Exactly. But yeah, he don't like spreading light to that. You feel me? He like to deflect. And say, My people been here, but nigga, we know the truth. Man, I I, I knew that he's he's clearly Caribbean. When you have cats out here. Just talking in circles about the oh he's up let me let me get him up here let, let me get him up here D Dylan they said um you're you're Haitian D Dylan are you Haitian because you did mention Haiti now nah, Dylan hey, brother. Nah, are listen, you Haitian bro now nah, now that you done brought me back up, you gonna have a real conversation yo yeah now are you Haitian no I'm not Haitian bro so you keep the truth to... alive my nigga. We got the pics, okay, nigga. Okay, Mike. Okay, Mike. Let's keep the truth. I ain't going to do you like that, nigga. When niggas really even been though, sparing even you, bro. Even though, even though it's not nobody motherfucking business, I'm going to let y'all in. But when I say this, don't get the band like, oh, I knew he was Haitian or whatever the fuck. But when I did my lineage, I had a person in my family who was from Haiti in the 1700s. There you go. So say that, if that man, make nigga. me Haitian... Nigga, it's y'all eyes, it out of you, then nigga, whatever shit, the nigga, fuck y'all want to But the last time I had a fucking relative in Haiti was in the 1700s. So if that make me Haitian to y'all, then I'm Haitian. But I could give a fuck less. Well, it sound like y'all want to look at me, bro. I don't give a fuck. It sounds like somebody might be Haitian in recent ancestry, sir. Because bro, you I have no reason to lie, bro. I'm up yeah, here you with this nigga with this fishing man bucket head up here. He up here. Oh, I got all the tea on this nigga. I'm fishing man. for the truth, nigga. And something you don't know about. Conversation about real shit. And nigga, like, oh, I got all his tea. Yeah, and do. Come on, and bro. do. <laughs> and do. <laughs> and do. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about, Mike, Steve? Don't let me. Don't let me fuck you up. You got the more. Fuck is you talking about, dummy? Don't get <laughs> mad. Don't get mad because the jig is up, nigga. Hey, uh, niggas really been sparing your dumb ass, nigga. 
Yo, I walked I in on the space and this nigga was talking Mike. about me. Mike, you a fan, and you know what I'm bro. talking about. You, a fan, you know what Mike? I'm talking about. A fan bro, of who? Mike? A fan of who, nigga? You're a, you're a fan, sidekick. Bro. Fuck is you you're talking fan, about, bro. nigga? You're, you're a sidekick to there, Africa Trooper Copper, nigga. Let's have a real conversation for once. You're a sidekick, my nigga. Let's keep the truth alive, Steve. Now I'm on my sidekick. At first, I'm the same nigga. You've been a sidekick, nigga. So I'm not that other nigga. No, nigga. At first, I thought y'all was twins, nigga. Okay. Remember? I don't nah, yeah. talk to you, bro. All right, Mike, then, you nigga. Never, never want have a real Because you ain't got nothing to Mike. say, nigga. You don't want to have fuck, a real nigga. conversation with me, Mike. Yo, I'll fuck you uh, up. You know that. Nigga, see, if you don't knock it off, nigga, you're a drug addict, nigga. <laughs> what are you talking about, nigga? You're a dumpster diver, Dylan. Oh, God. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, let me live here. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, Dylan, Dylan. Yeah, I, Dylan is on one. Yeah, Dylan ain't slick. This dude. Um, clearly comes from a tether background when cats are talking in circles and all of that. That's just a smoke screen. He ain't slick. We see how you do. We see you. All right, let me get some more folks in here. Shout out to everybody in here. How many folks we got in? What's a red joke? I see you. Um, damn, we got 1,200 people in here tonight. Damn, we in here heavy. Y'all need to be following my channel, my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, if you're not following it. That's my YouTube channel. Let's get Leo Blavatnik in here. Let's get a Caucasian gentleman, Leo Blavatnik, in here. What's up, Leo? Unmute your microphone, Leo. Yo. Hey, Leo. Yeah, I'm good. Hello, Leo. Leo, what they the hell kind of they, sound they, is that, they, man? What I'm trying to say, you all talk about. I'm Ukrainian. You're Ukrainian? Okay. Yeah, I'm Ukrainian. And my mom was black, so when I sound like that, you should know I'm a black man, dude. Okay? So, right now. So, why you got to sit there? So, you, so you got to. So, you got to. Black folks. Okay, so why, okay, hold on, slow down. So why do you tell this? You got a, a, a white man as your profile picture. So you're pretending to be a white man on the internet. Okay, Lord, what's what's with you, tell this man? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pretending to be a white man. On Dude, first of all, you ain't from no damn Ukraine. That accent is clearly West no, Africa. On what part of West? What part of West Africa are you from, man? What part of West Africa are you from? Boy, Tethers be so ashamed. Y'all just be living in fantasy worlds. I, I am mixed, nigga. I am me. I am, I am um, French and Ukrainian, nigga. Man, what part this of Africa are you from? Tongue. Stop. What what part, bro? Man, I hope somebody steal all your ostrich eggs. You can go check. You say. Get get off here, man. Just, just get out of here. You, you, the, you're making the phone musty, musty with lies. Good grief, man! Boy, cats be so ashamed of their damn background, man. I'm so glad I can stand on my FBA pride. You know what I'm saying? These people are ashamed of their background, and they would, they for years would project that shame onto us. Tell me, you do niggas don't know where you're from. You don't know who you are, nigga. We are very comfortable with who we are. We are so deeply rooted and seeped in our culture. We know who we are. We're comfortable in our skin. We ain't fleeing all over the damn place. These tethers be online pretending to be other people, fake profiles, cake soap, um, crooked wigs. Um, Claiming all types of weird ancestry. Yeah. I'm Egyptian and Sudanese, nigga. Just all types of stuff. Y'all don't know what y'all want to do. Not not all of my non-FBA people. I'm not beating up on all of my non-FBA people. But come on, y'all see your tether class. Your tether class, they're the worst. They are the worst. Um, let's get my brother T. Frazier in the building. T. Frazier. So T. Frazier, he said he got um, his song Waiting on You on All Platforms. You got an R&B album, T. Frazier? 
T. Frazier looked like a background singer for hey. the group. <laughs> What's, going What's, going on? On? What's going on, my brother? <laughs> <laughs> Not a background singer, man. Uh, hey, hey uh, currently today, man, I still write for many, many artists in the, in the game if, if the budget is right. But, uh, yes, hey, Tariq, I wanted to holler at you about um, – I don't know how to reach you, man. I've been searching – high and low. Uh, I wanted to see if I can get maybe five to ten minutes with you and your team and uh, uh, my team and myself. Uh, I'm a businessman. I have a couple. I have two actually really lucrative ideas that I think you would probably be interested in. I just, I don't know how to get a hold of you, brother. If there's any way I could reach you for probably, you know, just a few minutes to run it by you. Yeah, just email me info at Tariq LA. That's my email. So yeah, you can hit me up there, and hopefully, hopefully it ain't no random spoons ideas, man. Nah, man, I, I um, I'm pretty confident. Uh, you may be interested in. Them. Um, okay. Let me uh, let me get that one more time. Info at Tariq at what? Tariq dot L A. Tariq dot L A. Gotcha. All right, thank All right, you, brother. brother. All right, brother. Uh-huh. All right, and, and, and man, e- don't email me with no bullshit, man. Because people email me. Listen, I got some real important for you now. I got some real lucrative. All right, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to hit you up on an email. It's gonna be a proton email because it, it's encrypted. Because I don't want nobody spying on this good idea I got for you. Oh, they just build it up. Oh, they build it up and build it up, and then they hit you up. Listen, listen. This is what I got here. Listen. Now it's just between me and you. All right. Listen, I got a hold of Anita Baker's demo tape from 1977. I'm going to auction it off on Christie's. I want you to invest in the restoration in it. All right. And then we're going to do some. I want to put Mink Slide on there with it and do a mixtape of Anita Baker's demo. Oh, God damn. This is some weird ass, random, (laughs) convoluted ass idea. God, I hate when people do these convoluted ideas and they act like it's top secret. You meet with them and everything. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. You meet with people and they want to go, listen, listen, we need to have a business dinner. It's on me. And they show up. Listen, now we got to talk in private. They show up with an overcoat on and sunglasses and a, and a briefcase. Now listen, now we got to talk in private. Let's go here to the back of the restaurant so people don't see us. Because I don't know. I think I might have been followed. Um, all right, now listen here. Look at him. Hold on, Nick. Let me go into my briefcase. Let me show you something. They open the briefcase. Oh, there's gold teeth in there. What's that? What the fuck is that? So you see these gold teeth? I have a business where we hit, we got gold teeth for pit bulls. That's a whole new industry that people ain't tapped into. We're going to give gold grills to pit bull puppies and they're going to grow into them. All right. This is I'm, I told you first, I want you to get in on it first. Ain't nobody putting gold teeth on pit bulls. Nobody. I've been I was doing it in Memphis for everybody. OK, so I'm telling you, this is going to be a million seller. God damn it, man. Damn. Y'all don't understand the random spoons ideas that people hit me with all the time. Oh, don't let nobody come with a documentary idea. <laughs> oh God. I hate when I go to different cities and I'm out of some barbershop. Because I'm in the I'm in the neighborhood. When I'm out, you know, I'm in the neighborhood. I go to the local barbershops, or whatever, and it's always somebody. Listen, you need to do a documentary on me and my family. Oh God. When I hear that oh, shit, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Uh oh. Listen, you need to do a documentary on me and my family. You understand me? My family was the first family in Valdosta, Georgia, to sell pickle pig feet at the Winn Dixie on Third Street. Oh God. We had a pickle pig feet business that was very lucrative, and then the white peoples came in and they took over. Okay. All right. My granddaddy was the pickle pit feet king. <laughs> oh God. Shit, man. Okay. So let's do it. And you can have um we can do it into a movie. You get Terrence Howard to play me. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> okay, nigga. 
goodness gracious, man. Y'all don't understand what I be hearing. Yeah. Let me get a couple of more people on here. We ain't gonna be in here too too long. Let me get, let me get Gable in here for a minute. I don't. <clears throat> I really don't want to hear a lot of bad faith on this because he Gable has a bunch of DNC talking points. Gabriel, are you at the DNC convention? Gabriel. Gabriel, are you at the DNC convention? You're probably out there in Chicago. Gabriel, hop on, man. Gabriel, hop on. Hello. What's up, Gabe? <laughs> uh, what's good, Tariq? What's up? Are you at the DNC convention? Uh, no, I had some work to do this week. I wasn't able to make it, but I was at a different watch parties. I've been doing a lot of work down here in Georgia for the party, and it was a amazing production. Probably one of the if not the best convention I've ever seen, honestly. Yeah, but it ain't really moving the streets like it's supposed to. Yeah, I don't know, a lot man. Of feeling it, brother. I don't know, man. I heard a lot of powerful speeches this week. Like Michelle and Barack, they were, they were amazing, and like yeah. people were crying, still be crying when they be speaking. Like they, they did their thing. The streets we, ain't the streets wasn't feeling that, brother. Jasmine Crockett gave a great speech. Oh, uh, uh, she did. I don't know if you watched her speech. Did you even watch? You watch the DNC? I watched some of it, and mm. all that sass, all that sass and shade. That ain't that ain't streets ain't feeling sass and shade. Carrie Washington, she was the MC yeah. today. She was yeah. cool. Uh, Kamala Harris' sister was on there today. Kamala Harris, she gave a she gave she gave a good speech. She's been better at public speaking, so she gave a really good speech. But Oprah, oh my god. That shit was amazing. Like Oprah, like it was I don't know, it's just like it just projected the message that we need to project it, which is, you know, a projection of message of unity and I th- I thought it was great. Yeah, the streets ain't feeling it, brother. I, I mean, but I- you you was going into it already hating her. Come on, you was never gonna anything the DNC could have done, you was not gonna approve of. Let's be real. No, they would have went up there and said, Hey, black people, we got something for you. Yeah, I would approve of that. But yeah, just fucking and jiving for four five hours. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> oh my god! Did you see Lil John yo uh, when they came out for the Georgia roll call, bro? And then lying about Beyonce. That was a low. That was oh, a low that wasn't from the DNC, man. That wasn't oh, from the DNC. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> you know, good, I, it was not from the DNC. That lie out. You know we don't need to. How I would because you say this to boost viewership, but the no, DNC, but the DNC has been like yeah. out like the viewers, the viewership of the DNC has been mm-hmm. outpacing the RNC for four nights in a row, so man, they don't need to man. do that. To, what? Yeah, because it's the damn it's the BET Awards. So yeah, yeah it's, the, <laughs> it's the BET. I mean, it's I mean yeah. like it's I mean you put on you're in a, I mean you're an event coordinator. You put on shows like it's a it's supposed to be a production. It's a show. Okay, like that's yeah. what the convention is for. We do when we do it. Yes, when we <laughs> had our event in Washington D.C that brought thousands of people in. We sat there for hours talking about policies that needs to be enacted and what black people should get. Very much policies were talking. Then we had a musical performance, all right? Policies were not, policies were very much discussed at the DNC. And if you watch Kamala Harris' speech, she discussed a lot about policy. Not really, and nothing for us. she did. Not a damn thing for black people. What's the policy for us, except these lift-all programs? You got all these black folks in there shucking and jiving, but no policy for black folks. All right? Hold on. My bad. My bad, Gabriel. My bad. Yeah, the- uh, yeah, I was muted. But no, it was, I mean, like, the policies that she I don't have you blocked, brother. Go ahead. Mute. I'm sorry. I think it was a double mute. No, the policies she had, she spoke about today are going to help black people are they going to help white and hispanic people too yeah well it's not a policy for us then it's a lift all policy if, that, if, it's, that, if it's going to help if it's going to help a black single no. mom or a family that's in the middle a black family in the middle class that, why wouldn't you support that that's a policy for us that's like an all lives matter lift all boats and we get the crumbs basically it's a crumb policy that we still get crumbs in so nothing for us so we ain't with that Wanting. <laughs> Wani, somebody. Wani, what's up, brother? This is this is. Hey, what's up, Tyree? How's it going, man? I'm good. How are you, brother? Going good, man. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, I just want to shed some light on what's going on in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, man, they got these Venezuelan gangs flooding the zone from the DNC, man. 
Uh, they out here taking over uh, apartment complexes. They out here uh, kicking out the residents. I and heard. You know, yeah, you know it's mainly the black residents too. Um, and yeah, man, it, like if everybody can just go on Twitter and type in Aurora, Colorado, they got videos of everything, man. They out here dressing up like like construction workers. These Venezuelan uh, uh, immigrants that have uh, fled the zone, and they out here busting the homes and robbing people. They got videos of uh, these Venezuelan gangs out here robbing uh, jewelry stores. So it's really uh, it's really crazy out here, man, in Aurora, man. So I feel like everybody should just uh, go check that out. And I'm laying my plane. Thank you. And Gabriel, so is that the policy that the DNC is rocking? That's the policy for us? Policy Business. of what? If you heard Kamala Harris' speech today, she talked about how she's gonna be, she will be strong on the border, how Trump blocked the border bill that was supposed to pass in Congress, to, and that oh. was the strongest. Re, the Republican leader, Mitch uh, McConnell, called it, he called it the strongest border legislation in 40 years, uh, and Trump I, blocked it because it was going to hurt his campaign. Right, Let's keep, what you going to say to you gotta, the Yeah, call a spade a spade. Yeah, call a spade a spade. Yeah, tell that to the people of Aurora, Colorado, man. What are you talking about? This situation in Aurora, Colorado. Bro, bro, type in Aurora, Colorado on Twitter right now. Just type it in, bro. Aurora Space, Colorado, bro. Type that in. I'm gonna let my plan and get about here. Thank man. you, brother. Yeah, uh, yeah. But Gabriel, the, the DNC, how, they need to be doing something. They could be doing something about these Venezuelan gangs. Um, flood these black neighborhoods. I mean, immigration, I mean, yeah, like to the point of immigration, immigration needs to be under control, but like the whole point, the system they're, of legal and illegal it. immigration has been out of control. I mean, not yeah. out of control, but the system's been bro broken for 40 years. Okay. For 40 yeah. years. How come they ain't doing nothing now, man? They can't blame it on Trump. Trump ain't in office. We're not blaming it on, I'm not blaming it on Trump. I mean, I blame it on Trump because he interfered with Congress on oh. doing their job. Okay. And you have to, you have to, you have to criticize that. Okay, they're not doing Kamala and Biden. They're not doing nothing. Kamala about it. and Biden literally went and worked with the Republicans to find a solution, and they found that solution. And then What's Trump the called his Republican buddies and said, "No, don't do okay. it because I don't want to help. I don't want to help the Democrats in an election year." Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, God, it's bad faith. That's so not true. Trump don't have nothing to do with these immigration gangs running around. Trump has nothing to do with that. This whole thing where they try to twist it and blame Trump. I can't have lies. That ain't true. Trump ain't in power. He's not in office right now. He didn't. Trump called somebody and stop. Stop it. These folks got all types of charges. The Democrats helped put all types of charges on Trump. Trump ain't sitting up calling nobody calling shots right now. Stop it. Yeah. Come on. Uh, let's get um, messy boots. Messy boots in the building. What's up, messy boots? Hey, messy boots, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. What city, messy boots? Um, Detroit. Detroit. Shout out to Detroit. What's uh, on your mind? Um, I want to know. Um, Okay, I don't get the narrative like the Dems have not done anything and then, you know, it gets spread it all over the place when, um, well, hold on, hold on, where, um, please hold on. Thank you. I meant to say please. Um, okay, when when Biden signed the Juneteenth, in, Juneteenth holiday into law, several co congressmen, uh, you know, several congressmen, women, they wrote a letter to Biden regarding reparations like after we got the holiday done now now can we start moving on to this okay and then there's actually a bill that was written but that's not going to pass if you don't have a majority in the house or the, you know what i mean you're not your bill the bill's not even going to get reviewed it's going to sit there collecting dust because the the because the house of representatives are, are Republican led. So that's okay. not that's, ever going to happen if you don't have messy. people to vote for it. Okay, Messi, how come non citizens are getting all of this damn money? They ain't voting. How come they ain't got to jump through these hurdles? They just hop over the border and there's money, food, shelter, resources, and training right there for them. How come they ain't got to jump through all these? Okay, okay. I, I lost you, but go ahead. What'd you how say now? How come non citizens? <laughs> don't have to jump through all these hoops and wait for the House and the Senate and the Republican this and that, and they come over the border. Okay, you're talking about, okay, well, let me tell you about immigration, uh -huh. okay? Now, I did hear you say, I did hear you say, like, oh, you can't blame that on Trump. Well, yes, because he, no, not everything, but but that part is true. He did block the, the bipartisan bill. 
his and his cronies in there that actually he it, it was very public. I pull up an article. Ma'am, the Biden administration are letting all these people in here. It's not Trump. The Biden administration giving yeah. all of these people. Okay, wait. Okay, with the Venezuelans and people coming across the border, especially the Venezuela, the Venezuelan, is because Trump tried to muscle Venezuela uh, oh, oil. It, you know about that, right? No, right? ma'am. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's, okay, and then, that. but okay, let me ask you this: Did you know that okay. that 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 ma'am, Trump you, actually that Trump gave all Venezuelan tip, uh, typical temporary legal? Status? Ma'am, Trump didn't bring all these people over here. Trump, oh, I, look, look, look. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Money, okay, what Trump, okay, let me tell you what Trump, Trump did. Trump, Trump, Trump had a better record. Hold on. These Trump had Democrats, a better record at letting illegal, getting rid of illegal, but but he did not, I mean, he did not stop illegal immigration, but what he did is he stopped the legal process, and that's why the Biden administration is so backed up on that's immigration cases, and then, and, and Trump had that's surges lie. just the same as Biden did, and, and once they lie. get these people processed, a lot of them are going to go back no, across, they're, they're going to get deported from here. They're, they just gotta That's go through. Right. They just gotta go through what what that within that current bite the current. This man, this lady is just sitting here lying. You're lying, ma'am. That's not true. These are talking points from the DNC. That's a talking point where you're supposed to lie and blame Trump no matter what. Just make up some convoluted lie to blame Trump for all of these people that the Biden administration are letting in here. Trump is not giving these people money. The Biden administration, they're bringing these people in and giving them money, housing, incentives. You're not going to sit y'all asses on here and lie and say it's Trump's fault. Y'all not going to sit here and lie. They got bills out in California. They're giving millions of dollars for these people to get housing and homes. This whole thing with Kamala Harris talking about this money for first generation home buyers. She's talking about immigrants. That ain't got nothing to do with no Trump. They're incentivizing these people to come over here and they got all types of resources for them. You are not going to sit on here and lie and talk about it's Trump's fault. That's a damn lie. And trying to talk over me, y'all trying to get your lie out real fast. That's not going to work either. You think just talking over people with your lies going to work. That's not going to work, ma'am. Messy. It's very bad faith arguments you're making there, beloved. Very bad faith. You're, you're doing the Democrat shield thing. All right? You're arguing in bad faith, dear. Not a good look. You're one of these vote blue no matter who people, ma'am. And y'all come in and this is why you're not really getting that grassroots support from the Democrats. People see this babbling y'all doing. We see these bad faith arguments and it's a turn off. It, it looks very disingenuous, which it, which it is. Okay, Messi. So you go back and tell the DNC what I said. Tell whatever um, marketing company that have you guys out here spewing this BS. Let them know this is not going Tell me it's not true. Tell me it's not Everything true. It was a lot. Tell me that there's not a bill that was submitted uh, from Congress, mm -hmm. sitting into Congress under Man, Biden. Tell me it, that's not nothing, true. Nothing you said is true. Tell me that's not I true. I said it. It's not true, beloved. You're just making up stuff the DNC. Beloved. Do you want to see proof? Ma'am, it's no, it's no bill. No, you don't want to see proof because you want to be, you want to keep misleading people with lies. Um, just like they think Biden. Miss Ma'am, you're not going to sit here lying just so you can get your or 102 schools. But he gave you, you can't even pronounce Venezuela. You said Ven Venezuela. You up here talking about the Venezuelas. The Venezuelas came over here because of Trump. Ma'am, this is your typical damn Democrat shill. Just clueless as hell. Let me let you get off here, man. I don't want to hear Democrat shield babble, ma'am. Okay. I don't want to hear about the Venezuelas. Can't even say it. Lord. These are your Democrats, family. 
it's like a plantation. I'm telling you, the Democrat, these Negroes sound like their own slave plantations. Can't talk, babbling, can't think worth a damn, running around here confused, eating catfish nuggets and cornbread. And we vote the vote. We got the vote now. He's going to get in good trouble if we don't now. The Benz and Whalen's going to get us now. Okay. Oh, boy, these are the Democrats, man. This, Hey, man, these folks are gone. Pokemon, hop in, man. What's up, Tariq? I'm good. How you doing, Pokemon? I'm good. I'm good. No, I was just, just keeping, I'm just being safe from the Benz and Whalers. Go ahead. What's in your mind? <laughs> <laughs> so I was just listening to that. It is a bad faith argument because the Democrats, they don't need a bill to, to close the border. Trump didn't have a bill. Um, they just I, they, I guess they just wanted to give a bunch of people citizenship through that bill. Um, but Biden and Kamala could have just closed the border using an executive order. Right. Why? I said, right, right. I'm oh, right. no. Yeah, no. Yeah. The, the, yeah. They could easily do that the, in the same way that Biden's using the executive orders right now to, to pay off student loans, um, to pay off, to, to send money over to Ukraine, Israel. They could, yeah. do, they could probably do the same thing with reparations or tangibles for the black community. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, Pokemon. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, let's get, um, what's your name? Yut, what's your Yutsav. name? Yutsav. Yutsav. Where are you from? Um, Yut, Yutsav. Where are you from? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an American, but I'm of Indian origin. And there you uh, go. just like to pay my respects to you because uh, you're a wonderful host. You have a lot of great issues that you talk about, and that's very relevant. I'd Thank like you. To, I'd like to ask you for a counsel and opinion. So yes. President Trump had asked a question about two or three weeks ago uh, if Kamala was black or Indian. Now, what I'm trying to better understand here is, are, um, in your opinion, and based on all the folks that you speak to, what is your impression about Kamala's biracial identity? And is she actually convincing African Americans that she's truly uh, one of, uh, you know, their, you know, your own? Like, is she able to communicate well? Do you think she really reaches to you guys in terms of, like, issues, concerns, and so on? No. No, look, Kamala Harris is not a foundational black American. She's not from our lineage. And a lot of us on the grassroots, when she tries to do the cosplaying thing, talking about collard greens and all of that, that's from foundational black American culture, which she is not a part of. She grew up in an Indian culture. Um, her so-called blackness was supposed to come from her Jamaican dad, and it has never been proven that he is identified as black. Jamaicans have Indo-Jamaicans and all types of caste systems in Jamaica. So there's no evidence that that man is, has ever identified as black. And that's supposed to be where her blackness came from. And then they throw the whole HBCU and that's supposed to be her black credential. She's not a foundational black American. So whatever melanated identity she wants to have outside of that, whatever, knock yourself out. You're not part of our lineage. So cosplaying is that, that's insulting. As an Indian, how do you guys feel about how she portrays herself? So Brother Nasheed, I have to tell you that this lady has Hindu heritage, uh, but, you know, converted to Christianity. And the thing is that I thought Kamala, who ran as an Indo-American, would actually care about my people um, and would speak to the Hindus that are being killed in Bangladesh right now. And... I thought she would have said at least something, you know, the Asian, you know, the Indo-American community has given her tons of cash uh, when she ran for various positions in California, San Francisco. And she, she's, you know, doesn't embrace our values, doesn't even like try to do anything for her causes. And all she does is like cosplay with like foodie uh, posts, you know, dressing up, but she never really talks to the heart of anything. And it's very insulting and denigrating. And I look at all my, Indo-American Zoomer friends, and they're just bought into her, and it's just like really superficial. And I've been raising awareness on this, and I keep getting pushback that no, no, we need to go and make you know this generational thing where we we need to make history and have an Indo-American in the White House. And it's like, 
that's nice, but like she doesn't actually like cater to our values. She doesn't actually talk about these issues. She just, you know, talks about this woke nonsense. It's like gobbledygook. It has no substance. There's no history to it. Like African Americans have an actual freaking history. It's beautiful. They can trace their roots to kings uh, in an Africa. They can go into depths about like all the scientific discoveries made by their kings. Not a history of chemistry, so on and so forth. Indian culture, same thing. There's things you can really extract from that. And Kamala, I feel, doesn't like talk about this sort of stuff. She's just really like diluted in terms of her heritage, in terms of playing up to these cultural, uh, you know, greatness, you know. And I don't know. It just makes me feel like she's fake. And right. I just now, don't now understand me, it. And let me ask you that now. You, um, do you support Trump? Are you a Trump supporter? I am a strong supporter of President Trump. Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are leaning towards Trump. A lot of people um, on the grassroots, a lot of black men are. I, I did an interview today with a, a journalist, and they were asking me about um, are really a lot of black men and women kind of, not even if they're not really supporters, but they're just kind of looking at his policies like, okay, we're open to hear what you have to say. Because the, the Kamala thing, people are just not feeling it. And all of this fluff and pizzazz and Hollywood productions, uh, that's not going over like they think it is. The grassroots are saying something different. Even when you look at the comments on social media, when people post up clips, people are like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, what's the policies? Hell, I, I can look at the Soul Train Awards any day. When What's what's the policies they got? Because yeah, they're turning her the, the, the DNC is the Soul Train Awards. All right, that's cool. But when the award is over, all right, now what's going on? What, what are we going to get? So that's where people are with it now. You see? All right. We've got a lot of people in here still. we got like almost 1,300 people in the building. It's the middle of the night. All right. It is the middle of the night. Let's get RJ in the building. Let's get RJ in here. What's up, RJ? And by the way, don't forget to get the Rootwork deodorant at rootworkstyle.com and get the movie microphone check at microphonecheck.com. But RJ, Reformed, Reformed Justice. Hop in, man. Hey, Bo, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. But, um, yeah, Bo, it, like you keep saying... You're not a Republican or a Democrat, but like for the whole of this year, you've just been dumping on Democrats and you have nothing to say against Republicans. It's, it's like, you know, if it, if it cracks like a duck, you feel me? Yeah. So what if what if it's a damn duck then? What if I am a Republican, which I'm not? But what if I well, wouldn't say that then? Don't don't don't, you know, play this hot potato thing that you say democrats okay, and republicans. Was, okay i'm saying okay if i was then what okay then so people know who they're following people know who, your, where your bias lies so you don't pretend and act like you're 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 you know a enlightened centrist that you just you're just above everyone and you just don't you know okay, better what, not to that ain't got nothing to do with a political party that sounds like some jealous personal shit you talking what i'm saying stop pretending as if you are you well, are moderate. It has nothing to do with a political party. That's jealous tether babble. I don't know what you mean by that. What do you mean yeah. by that? You're talking about you just seem like you're better than everybody and enlightened. Nah, that's jealous tether babble. That ain't got nothing to do with no political party. So what are you jealous of? Why are you jealous as a, as a man? What? See, you always take things into chest beating and you start acting tough. I'm not talking about not chest. Tough, but you just said some real jealous whole ass stuff that's you know you think you're better than the enlightened uh, no no i don't i'm just speaking my truth and giving my opinions and yes i've been critical well, you, of the you've been, you've been crushed oh, it out oh, you've oh, been crushed oh, you, you, you've been down. crushed out against the against the democrats yeah because the democrats are playing in our damn faces they got a fellow tether like you sitting around here trying to cosplay as people in my lineage i got a problem with that i do it's insulting you know, you you know what it's looking like now, right? You you know it's looking like you 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 want people to support the white racist and go against the black people. You know that's what it's really looking at. Like what black now. people? 
go against what black people? You don't think Kamala's black? No, she's not a foundational black American. No, 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 an SBA, but, but a black a person. Indian. She's a Hindu Indian. And no, but she's also in part Jamaican, and that's black, um, right? Uh, no, no, no. There's no proof that her dad has identified as black. There is no proof she's genetically no, no, black. No. But no. she has black skin. Her men, she has melanin. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, East Indians have black skin. They ain't black. Yeah, no, but they have melanin. They're not white. So what, they, what are we they talking about? Black, and they don't identify as black. Even if someone doesn't identify as black, because there are, you know, coons that don't identify as black, but they're um, still black skinned. So don't matter. There's a lot of black skinned people who don't identify as black. What they I identify? Don't, I don't have a camaraderie with them. I don't owe them. Thing. What they identify is irrelevant. They're still melanated. That's irrelevant. Don't mean nothing. There's a lot of melanated people who will cut your damn throat as a black person. Yeah, there's a lot of melanated people who are complete sambos. We don't owe them nothing. You see, yeah. now you're going into owe. Oh, it's not a matter of owing Kamala. It's a, it's yeah, a, it's I, not... I don't have a camaraderie. Look, you're from Africa. You're from Africa. There's a bunch of melanated people in that continent. You guys are tribalistic as hell. Y'all can't even get nothing together over there. You're so tribalistic. So that don't mean anything. Just having melanated skin and everybody's off code, that don't mean nothing. That's so why you, you have... want you want on code white racists that are on code with being racist. <laughs> what? The hell does that mean? You're just making up stuff. That's a projection. You, white That's supremacy. Pro you don't think Trump is for white supremacy. You don't think Trump is for racist. And and people, he, he he sat with Nazis and ate with Nazis. Well, what are we talking about? So did Biden. His mentor is a damn Klan member. Yeah, and Trump also. His dad was arrested at a Klan rally. So and and Biden's Robert Byrd, Biden's mentor was a Klan leader. That was Biden's mentor. Biden didn't Biden speak at his funeral? His mentor was a Klan leader. You can't point at Trump and then not point at Biden, who's president now. Yeah, but Biden Biden, Biden isn't, you know, supporting the, the Proud Boys and saying stand by and all this the stuff. Hell ain't. Biden and those guys ain't never prosecuted none of those white supremacist groups. Biden, there, the Democrats don't punish the Proud Boys, the Patriot Front. They never hit them guys with RICO and none of them. They hit black folks with RICOs all the damn time. They throw and the Trump, on and us Trump all the time. And Trump to wants to give them immunity. Trump wants to give them immunity and, and sit have, with them. The Biden administration has already given it um, immunity to cops and all of these people. They already got it. At least they're still calling them out by voice. Trump no, wants to. Voice ain't doing it. Oh, no, miss me with that voice shit. That's cap. It's called capping. If they wanted to do something about them, they would do something about them. This whole thing where we 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 trying to do something about police reform, we just can't sign it. It's the Republicans stopping us. It's them Trump people. We they got our hands tied. They keep kicking the can down the street like they oh, can't okay. do. What the hell okay, I so, do? So ain't falling you, for that. We're not falling for that, sir. Okay, so you want to shuck and jive? You, you always say there's a shield for Democrats, but what about yeah. Republican shields? That's also a thing. Yeah, but they don't be in here trying to shame us into voting. You Democrat shields try to come in here and shame oh, us. Oh, right Republicans! Now. Republican oh, shields don't say black people are too silly, and they, they always just, they always just no, no, no. What they don't do, they don't parade around some East Indian telling us we got to vote because this East Indian is really black. They don't do that nonsense. Well, they so say vote for the white guy who's country. racist. So the what? They, they say vote for the white guy who's racist. They want you to vote for a racist white guy. You don't well, think we that's... Got, we got a racist white guy in office now, Biden. Okay, so you want to double down then? You, you, you feel like... I, I, we, got you, a, we got a racist white man in the uh, White House right so now. Why don't, so you Biden. just want to double down for the... For the... No, 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 no. Because when Trump was in office, Trump didn't put a crime bill together to lock a bunch of black folks up. Biden did when when he was in office for years. Biden has been in office for decades. Biden has put policies together that has just devastated black society. You're not going to sit here and act like he's some kind of angelic creature over Trump. Biden has done horrible things to black yeah, Biden society. is far from angelic, but, <laughs> right. but Biden, Trump is close Biden, to the Biden, devil. I'll say that. Biden has undermined foundational black Americans for decades and then got on 
um, um, radio shows talking about if you you ain't black if you don't vote for him. That man has sat here and insulted us so much. He's so the you, racist. So you want people to double down and go for Trump? Is that it? Then? I want people to go for the couch. Vote for the couch. And well, unless Trump well, comes through with some tangibles. Now, if Trump comes through with some tangibles for foundational black Americans, then I will, that vote. I will support him. If Trump says, hey, I got some tangibles. I'm going to give black folks some jobs and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to give some tangible resources that's, that's to delusion. the black community. I'm going to support him. That's delusion, bro. Trump, Trump and Republicans are not bringing no tangibles, bro. That's delusion. And the, delusion. and the Democrats ain't either, so that's why we vote for the couch. Right? Yeah. And that's if Trump wins, you know, that means a lot of your cousins won't be able to come over here, brother. Your cousin See, now you're going into, this is chess beating again. You're going into chess beating. And anytime I'm not chess beating. I'm not chess beating, but that's what you're really upset about. You're trying to get your cousins over here, sir. No, I, I want to talk about the actual issues, which is Trump's and Republicanism is always been back. That's why you use LBJ. That's why you use LBJ as an example. Because LBJ and Democrats. Okay, first of all, you ain't at liberty to speak on our issues. You're a non-FBA. You ain't at liberty to speak on our issue. What makes you think you can speak on our issues and you're a foreigner? Because Trump makes everything bad what around the world. You think you can speak on FBA business? Okay, because um, America has bases all around the world, and anytime Trump gets in office, he spikes racists. So does and Britain. No ass didn't go to Britain and do anything about it. So don't come over here trying to tell us what to do about it. Britain was the one directly smacking your ass around. Because Amer America is literally the world superpower with the largest army uh, in the world. What are we talking Britain, about? Britain that 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 had y'all bowing down to them, and they're messing up your economy, and they still got their hands in your economy. You don't go over there. So does the U.S. USA has the largest economy. What are we talking about? No, it was Britain that was directly off in your ass. It wasn't the U.S. It was Britain for centuries directly in your ass. They were the ones who colonized you and drew the artificial land boundaries in your homeland, sir. And they still control your economy through um, the economic strangulation and, and trade um, tariffs and all types of little economic janky. The U.S. dominates um, modern, the modern economy, bro. That's not... And all also the in France, you're all of the white supremacists do in different nations, sir. And also, the 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 U.S. has a a liberal party in government. So they and when they had the riots, the the liberal leader said he's gonna you know start charging everyone to, in 24 hours and putting them in prison instantly. Sir, and another thing, don't don't holler about how bad the U.S. is and you all at you fled over here. So the U.S. wasn't that bad, were they? You fled I'm over not, here. I'm not. I'm not in the U.S. I'm saying I don't want the U.S. Yes, to... Aren't you to, either here or Canada? Which one? I, I'm saying I don't want the U.S. to encourage racists around the world. Because even in Italy... Okay, but you fled to get over here, though, so... I don't, I'm don't. i not in the U.S. Where are you? You either in the U.S. or Canada? Where? Which one? I'm not in the U.S. or Canada. I'm in Europe. Oh, okay. So you are... Are you in Britain? Are you hollering at the British government, the home uh, office, about them colonizing your homeland? No, no, I haven't done that. No. What the hell are you worrying about? What we doing over here? You again? I keep telling you. I keep telling you, and you keep calling me off because American the Trump's government keeps inspiring racists around the world, and and they keep <laughs> crashing out around the world. And Tommy the U.S. Robinson, has Tommy Robinson, that white supremacist over there, been smacking y'all around. And shout out to some of my riders over there because they have been getting at him. But them white supremacists been running around Europe. All for for way before Trump. They don't start that. Y'all got them white supremacist groups running all around Britain. All right. Yeah, and having Trump in office isn't it? It gives them more, adding more fuel to the fire. So we don't want that. We want to the calm. Then why don't y'all smash down on them? Why don't y'all smash, smash down on them? You just said you give you you gave props to the to right. the UK bros. So because I know some cats over there. I got some real good brothers over there that smashes down. Why do you why do you double speak? You say one thing and then you say another thing to contradict it. Like it's no, it's, no, no how how? Because you just you just gave props to the to the UK bros, right? Some and then of you, them, I got some. The operative is some. You ain't one of them because you yeah, sound. You can catch like you ain't doing nothing. I'm I'm like how come you? Well, I've, I've had my fair. I've had my fair squabbles with racists. Riders over there. I'm like nigga, why are you sounding so damn cowardly?
No, no, I've had my fair. I've had my. I've had my fair share. I've had my fair share. You're like, oh, the Trump is going to make the to make the white supremacists mad over here. That's cowardly. I know some riders over there that's bringing heat to them white supremacists. Okay, okay, but even if you can handle something, doesn't mean it should. It's good. If you, even if you can um, take on a home invader, oh. it doesn't mean you should leave your door open. Oh. All right. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I don't want to hear tether babbles. Damn. Oh goodness, this cowardly tether babble. I don't want to hear it. Let's get down south, Darren in the building. Good Lord, I can only do so much tether babble. Brother Down South Darren. What's up, brother? Uh, you know, I listen quite a bit, but I want to ask just your prerogative on this. I, I didn't watch the DNC because I don't want to give them no views, no nothing. But um, I, what what I wonder is this. You know, you were talking about education the other day. Yeah. On one of your shows. And I, I don't feel like the U.S. education as it sits right now is productive for FBAs. Right. And how can we get away just like, uh, that's why I don't really give them no views. I don't even worry about it. I love Stevie Wonder to death, but then, man, that broke my heart. Just me hearing that he going to get up there and sing whatever. It's terrible. Yeah. Right. All right, yeah, let me let me land your plane on that because yeah, that, that's a little bit too off, far off the subject. But yeah, um, we, we just have to educate ourselves. That's why we got books and films. So yeah, we educate ourselves. That's, that's real simple. Yankee, what's up, Yankee? Then I get AJ. Yankee. Hey, thanks, Tariq. I just had to point out that uh, Reform Justice, the gentleman you were just talking with, yeah, he's a tether in Ireland. Like you got, we got the tethers over here, and you guys see them in your community, and you speak about them all the time. The Irish are dealing with them just as well. He is. Now, a, you're in I, Ireland. You in no, Ireland? No, I'm not in Ireland, but I'm familiar okay. with this guy. He makes fake videos. Uh, fa he he makes little fake videos where like. He has his girlfriend knock on the windows, right? And then he runs outside all badass saying those racist Irish are out to get him. It's it's he's a phony. He's a RJ, little he's RJ, a little hammer. You think RJ, hold on. RJ, are you in here? Hold on. I didn't know RJ does that. RJ, is he telling the truth on you, brother? Okay, where's RJ? He he oh. works for Sinn Fein. Sinn Fein is a Marxist. Look look up Sinn Fein and what they've done to the Irish people. Right, they pulled the shuck and jive, a true shuck and jive. Hold on, let me get RJ back in here because if you make an alleg allegation against somebody, I want them to be able to defend it. RJ, is this true? Do you and your lady do all these weird videos? <laughs> I don't know what he's on about. You do it, you do it. You, I've seen your little cute posts. It, you're a shinner, right? You're a shinner, right? What's a shinner? Shin Fein. You're familiar with Shin Fein, right? Yeah, I'm not shinna though. So post the video. Let's see let's see the video you're on about. What are you talking about? No, you deleted it. You got so much shit from the Irish oh, community. How you convenient. deleted it. You'll make how another one shortly though. Every outbreak of violence over there, you you make a little cute little video and you come on here and you're very interested in American politics, which is cute, but it, it's because you're a Marxist. You're trying to sp spread your ideology. Sinn Fein's interested in American politics, but why? Because they're Marxists. They want a global community. And that's what you are. You're all well, about I'm, I don't know you from Adam. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't make well, any I videos. I know you, and the Irish know you very well. Now, RJ, are you in Ireland? Yeah. Okay, well... Okay, interesting. Yeah, but, uh, I don't make any videos he's that he's talking about. I don't Irish, know this he's Black Irish. He's it's, just saying that he's just saying random stuff like okay. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I don't know what's going on, but it's yeah, I don't know at all. At all. This guy is right. smoking yeah, something. All right, RJ. All right, let me get AJ in here. AJ Benjamin. Oh Tariq, what's going on, man? Hey AJ, how are you, bro? Small town in Ireland, I guess, you know. Jeez. Yeah. Well, man. uh yeah, no, man. I mean, um, I'm actually uh yeah, just uh Long, long time fan, but no, um, I just thought uh, I'd chime in a little bit. We were, we were talking about, uh, you know, I guess uh, 
it was a good deal about like racism a little while ago and it just like seemed like i mean rj that was like just the whole the whole spiel was i mean and there was a, a long list of stuff but it's like you know, like he like dined with nazis it's like do you know who you're talking about it's like that was nick fuentes and kanye west it's like that's who is labeled a nazi nowadays because yeah nick fuentes is a deliberate instigator and he took kanye west on this like tour that i think was really just supposed to fucking make kanye i mean look sorry you know yeah. uh it's three it's you know it's it's late so it's not yeah. you know family friendly but it was to make kanye west look bad i mean make him look like right. an idiot i think but but right. either way they just went on and and i i thought it was i I, om- I almost thought like it was like a lost bed of some sort it was so crazy the things i was hearing you know come out, out of kanye's mouth so i was like well yeah, that was fair. But but I mean, yeah. but then it's like, dude, come on. We we see, I mean, where we're talking about somebody who has actually arrested plenty of people that were probably unlawfully arrested. And then we're talking about another guy that's a private businessman. He was always loved by the community. It's like and just until he rocked the wrong boats, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, when they try to say play the Nazi thing, because see, my thing is, look, yeah, I call out racism on both sides and the the Democrats or the left leaning people. They only like to talk about racism when they can point at right wingers and Trump. And I'm not I don't let them get away with that. Um, You're not going to sit up here caping for Biden, talking about Trump and Nazis and Biden's mentor, Robert Byrd, is a straight up Klan member. He was a Klan leader. And not only was he a that, leader, that's person. not a that's not a characterization of a person. You're ta- you're just stating a fact. He had right, a right. paper somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. This is very documented. This is very well documented. So it's like we're not we're not talking about like, oh man, this guy. I've heard him say a couple things. So I'm gonna. He basically is a, and you can just any list of words that are basically hollowed out now because they're used so often. But it's like it. What you're saying right now, Robert Byrd. I mean that guy. I mean. The K, the clan is like a whole different thing. I mean, I think it's I think it's hilarious some of the movies we've had like about it, you know. I mean, these are some truly Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's their piece of work. Yeah. I'm muting my laugh. I'm I mute my mic when I laugh. But uh oh. yeah. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yes indeed. Yeah. All right, but thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thanks. All right. All right. Yeah, we're not gonna play that little game with um with Biden and act like his hands are Biden has done and said so much racist stuff as far as policies. His policies have affected black people negatively. Um text in. Hey, good evening, or I guess good night. Thanks for calling me up. I just want to respond to what uh Gabriel said earlier and some other folks about that border bill. Yes. So so they they want to underscore bipartisan. Well, if you and I go do something stupid together, technically it's bipartisan because we did it together, but it was still stupid. Yeah. That, that border bill codified into law 1.8 million to 2 million migrants a year to come into our country. It actually streamlined the migration process into our country. So, so, so it was a nonsensical bill. It, 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 I don't know why folks want to keep pointing to that like it's like it was some, you know, groundbreaking watershed moment. It wasn't. It was a terrible bill. It was it was a corporate politician's bill through and through. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I want I want to point this out, too. So the Biden administration in Harris, they have been flying in 30,000 migrants per month. Through a parole program, so folks from Haiti, Nicaragua, El Salvador, etc., have been flying in directly from their countries into our country, thirty thousand per month. Mm. That's been they just now suspended that program because it was ripe with fraud. Yeah. Literally, literally, you can look this up. I'm not making this up. Fact check me if you want in real time. Mm. So, 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 so that, so that's going on. Now there's actually a there's an application that people are downloading in Latin America. It's called the CBP1 application. They download it on their phone 
and they can apply for asylum from their living room on their phone. Damn. Whether, whether they're in Mexico City or wherever else, you can look this up. Wow. They are they are streamlining migration into our country. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nonsensical. The United States, we are $35 trillion in debt and rising. In the next 90 days, that's supposed to go up by another trillion. Our, our interest on our debt is over $1.1 trillion. And from what I read, 76% of our tax dollars are used each year just to pay the interest on our debt alone. Mm. And imagine you at home, imagine if 76% of your income was used to pay your credit card interest alone, not the principal, just the interest. You're going to go bankrupt. And yeah. so we're supposed to subsidize these migrants to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars a year. It doesn't make any sense. And now California, they're about to pass legislation in which migrants can get homes for no yeah. for no money down and no interest. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're doing they're doing the same thing in Oregon, but in Oregon, they're now going to give them thirty thousand dollars for a down payment. Yeah. I mean it, it's nonsensical. Look, it, look, look. In, in my opinion, look, I, I believe in immigration, but it has to be limited. It has to be sustainable. It has to be smart. We have to vet these people. This isn't 1813 in the Wild West, and we're trying to settle the West, right? Yeah. You feel me on that? This is 2024. America is in, we're in so much debt, we're about to go off of a cliff, and yet we want to subsidize all these people. And I'll tell you this, and I'll, and I'll, die, and I'll yield after this. Yeah. Let, let me tell you this. I learned through life experience, poverty breeds poverty. It doesn't matter of your race, your background, poverty breeds poverty. And here in America, if we want to keep bringing in this, all these folks from the third world, we're going to have to subsidize generations of them. The social welfare state's going to keep growing, and we're already going broke. Yeah. There's nothing prejudiced about that. There's nothing racist about that. It's basic math. And I don't know why folks get so caught up in, in the identity politics, and they want a virtue signal. And then, and then last thing— Kamala has said uh, recently, her, at least her platform signaled that they want to give amnesty to over 11 million migrants in this country. Why, yeah. do they, why do they want to do that? Because two-thirds of Latinos vote for Democrats. California used to be a Republican state from the 1950s until 1986. Mm-hmm. What happened? Ronald Reagan, through pressure from Tip O'Neill and Democrats, he yield, he gave in and he gave amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants. California turned blue and has been blue ever since. Yeah. Right? That's what they want to do. I'm, I'm telling you, you just watch. In our lifetime, I, I, I would predict in the next 20 years, my state of Texas will become a blue state because of these policies. And I'll yield wow. back. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. Okay, let's get the real Tamara. Real Tamara. Hi, Tariq. How are you? I'm good, Tamara. How are you, beloved? It's good. It's Tamara. Tamara. But um, yeah, and when you when you mispronounce my name like that, you know it's racist, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like with cow. It's like, oh god. You're uh, racist, I'm just, man. <laughs> just disrespecting the black womanhood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so anyways i've been watching your content on and off for many years and i gotta say to see the evolution in your content has been amazing um a lot of the things that you have touched on and other um, content creators have touched on um it's what made me evolve into the position that i have now regarding the democratic party and the republican party so i just kind of want to touch on something that you covered just recently regarding ann coulter i know ann coulter has been making the rounds on a lot of content creators including yourself regarding her comments about fba and reparations well i just wanted to say that her content her her comments about that date back at least 11 years ago 11 years ago she sat on msnbc and she talked about the exact same thing that she's talking about now which is that fba is owed reparations and nobody else she said things like you know um uh reparations and the civil rights is only for FBA. It's not for anyone else. So a lot of the same points she's making today, she made 11 years ago. And then with Trump, I think that something that FBA has to keep in mind is that um, 
it's going to be very difficult for either for either party, even if the Democrats want it to, for them to sell to their base reparations. Because quiet is kept, white people on both sides do not want Black people to get reparations. Democrats especially do not want Black people to get reparations. And I mean that in the voter base and in the um, leadership. In the leadership, in the leadership, how could they give reparations to Black Americans? Black Americans, you know, we get reparations and then we start to own more businesses. We start to own more houses. Suddenly we're not the lower class. Suddenly we're thinking about ownership and land and property and all that a little differently. And that might turn a lot more to independent and conservative voters. And that will certainly take away their voter base of 80 percent of black Americans. So so Democrats have a vested interest in making sure that that um, FBA never get any sort of comeuppance. Right. And for Republicans, it's just their voter base, period, are just anti um, um FBA getting reparations, never mind you the fact that uh, slave owners were even given reparations for, quote unquote, losing their slaves. Uh, white evangelists were giving were given reparations for the Boxers Rebellion, and I can go on and on and on. But the Trump administration, he met with people like Bob Johnson, the owner of BET. He also met with, you know, as you know, Ice Cube on the contract for Black America. And um, that may not be termed reparations, but the information and the opportunities involved in the contract for black america would be directly beneficial directly for black americans and he is the only candidate who's talking directly to black americans i I did hear that jill stein has some um some points directly to black americans but um trump is saying it loud and proud and as you know he walked into the black journalists um convention and they could have asked him any question they wanted to ask him about black about black america but they didn't and i wish that they would have but he showed up so i just i just think that you know there's one thing to say to vote for the couch but I, I think that this election is way too important because I don't think that we can afford four more years of Kamala. The border is wide open, open under under Biden. It can get worse. It can. It can get worse. Yeah, so we, we're waiting on somebody to really step up because thank you. Thank you for the call, too, dear. We're waiting on them to step up because they know this is a very important election. That black vote. This is the swing vote. We can make or break either one of the politicians. We need to use that to our advantage. We need to use it to our advantage. The Democrats, they have taken us for granted. They are throwing on all of these plantation celebrations and having their shields in here to to shame us. That's their only tactic because they don't want to give us anything. This is a, a, a great opportunity for the Republicans. If they come through with any type of tangible program, because we we haven't really supported the Republicans, but they don't owe us like the Democrats. The Democrats owe. It's like full out reparations, 20 trillion damn dollars, straight up and down. We've been supporting them for 60 years and waiting on them to come through with something and they've been doing the benign neglect. So that's why it's like very bold with the Democratic politicians. Y'all know what y'all need to give us. We didn't papered everybody up with our support. Now, with the Republicans, we don't have to go full-blown reparations with them because, you know, we already know what their position is, but some type of tangible program specifically for us, you see, that's doable. And we got to understand the political atmosphere we understand that they have a base, that, that far-right base. We understand how that works. But there's ways that we can move and shake with the Republicans to get tangibles for us that will not cause them to lose their base if we word everything right and word everything specifically for us. That's not worded in a way where it's going to become a, a DEI minority program where everybody can lunch onto it. There's things that we can do and put together where we can word things a certain way that's going to make sense for their base so they don't trip out and they don't lose their base. Because I understand that's the big problem. The sister hit it. The big issue that they have with both parties, especially the right wingers, you got a lot of these far right people who don't want black folks to get nothing and you don't want to lose them. But. Even those far right cats 
certain programs and certain things can be done where you won't lose them and we can get what we're supposed to get specifically. There's a lot of different ways and strategies we could utilize to get that popping. And I've talked to people behind the scenes about that on both sides, you see. So we got to know how to move and shake with this thing. Um, let me see. We still got a lot of people in here. Ah, uh, man. We, how many folks we got in here? Oh, we got 1,200 people. We're in here. Nathaniel. Okay. Nathaniel. You can stop with the gestures. Uh, uh, a Sambo tether trying to pretend to be white. You can stop with all of the gestures, dude. Okay. Let's get Jeremiah in quick. Let's get Jeremiah in the building. Thank you, brother Tyreek. Um, I mean, you hit hit the nail on the point. The sister that came up here before us hit the nail on the point. I think that we need to let the Democratic Party crash and burn. And whatever comes out of the ashes from that, we create our own party. We support our own leaders uh, in the black community here in America. And we're, we're just done with them. I mean, voting against them is pro priority number one for me. Thank you. I yield there. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man, the Democrats, they've just turned a lot of people off. They've turned a lot of people off. And my thing, man, I, I want to make a proactive support. Like, I don't want to support somebody just because I'm not supporting the other. And because, again, it's still in the realm of neglect. I, I only want to support somebody and I want to set a precedent. I want the president, the precedent to be set that you're going to have to give us something in order to get our support. Because I don't want the whole us going back and forth, running from the bad guy. I don't want to do boogeyman support. Well, I'm going to support you because the other guy's the boogeyman. The Democrats are the boogeyman, so I'm going to support you. The Republicans, they're the boogeyman. Oh, Project 2025 is coming. Oh, I got to go support the Democrats. No. They try to use these scare tactics with us. I'm not scared. Y'all just going to have to give me something. And I believe that Trump would be more open and accessible to give us some form of tangible. If Trump did that, man, he, that would change the game. The thing is, they just have to try to navigate how to do that without losing people in their base. And there are ways they can do that. There are absolutely ways they can do that. Where they will not lose their base and they will still get some type of tangible resources specifically to foundational black Americans. There's a lot of ways we can work that. So we just got to be on point and on code about it. All right. All right. Let me get up out of here, guys. Um, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Everybody make a contribution to the Hidden History Museum. And uh, we got some events coming. We got an event happening on um, Saturday, um, September 20, September 14th. And um, the tickets for that will be on sale tomorrow, so y'all stay tuned for that. Go to microphonecheck.com to check out the film Microphone Check. Go to rootworkstyle.com to get the rootwork deodorant. Go to officialfba.com to get the book Foundation of Black American Race Bader and your Foundation of Black American...